All right. Welcome to the first annual virtual Christmas party right here on Waste Some Time with Jason Green. We are going to have a fun-filled uh, two hours of holiday fun, uh, and we're going to be spreading Christmas uh, cheer. And with the guests are already starting to arrive. The first guest is, is, is actually... Uh, just outside, and we're going to bring him in in two seconds. So I just want to say Merry Christmas to everyone. This has been a great year for my channel. We've done incredible numbers, uh, almost a million views, closing in on uh, 10,000 subscribers, and so I thank everybody. And uh, we've had some amazing guests, and tonight I'm going to get to catch up with a few of them, talk about what they're up to, how they're going to spend the holidays, and uh, and a lot more. But I'm not going to have too much time to talk right now because uh, we've got to get uh, we got to keep a schedule. Of, of guests. Yeah, so, uh oh, so, who could that be? I think there's somebody at the door. Here he is. I, by the way, uh, speaking of albums of the year, here he is Tommy Skeel, Resist and Bite. Resist and Bite. Resist and Bite. Now, Tommy's on the East Coast, and normally at this point, he would be. Uh, in bed or, or watching TV, right? Reading? I would be reading about the Civil War. I'd be watching a show, yeah, on TV. I'd be probably in bed, a little ice cream. But I was rehearsing tonight with my little cover band. We do Priest and Rock Out, so I play bass in it. So uh, we were rehearsing. I was going to do this there, but now I'm in a Mustang in a parking, an Olive Garden parking lot. So uh, we're doing good. Yeah, that, listen, it, it, could be, it could be so much uh, worse. i got to say, Tommy... Uh, and first of all, everyone knows you from the band Tesla. You had an amazing, uh, uh, made incredible records. Everyone's a fan. But Resistant Bite, I'm not joking when I say of new releases, I think this is the record of the year. And people that I've turned on to it have all agreed. People enjoy it. Universally, people really um, enjoy that record. So uh, thank you so much for putting out such great music with your band. That's just amazing. You know what, man? When we were making it and everything, we felt the same way. We just felt like, man, this is just the best thing, man. And uh, that everyone's responded positively to it makes us feel great. It's it's awesome, man. And so tell me a little bit about plans for the new year for Resistant Bite. Well, uh, January 15th, we have a show in Atlanta. And we've been trying, trying, trying to get on a tour, and it just hasn't happened yet. But we really need to get in front of uh, another, you know, open up for another band that's got some built-in fans, and so they can kind of see us and spread the word more and how that whole thing works. So we, we're really trying to get on a tour is what we're trying to do. And so far, nothing's come up. We've been working it, working it, working it, but something will come up, and we'll get there. Yeah, and it's a tough time right now. Uh, yeah. Same for the record. You know, the record comes out in a hard year, and so you got to keep pushing um, this record as long as possible. Some of the people at the party uh, are, have some things to say. Resistant Bite is better than anything his former band has put out in a long time, in my opinion. So Wow. I uh, mean, you know, that's I, I'm not... Yeah, I get comments like that all the time, and I have actually a lot of comments like that uh, relating to the other band for a long time i mean on my facebook page and uh look at you know it's that's just awesome I, I really appreciate it and i feel the same way i feel like it's just a great record a great band and we got something really just awesome to offer and you know what we've been writing more i'm i can't i want to put out a fucking double record dude that's what i want to do i wanted to do it on this first record because we had enough songs but and i thought that would just be so ballsy a, a debut record you know like 24 songs or something we have them but and good songs you know so uh anyway we we got them we've been writing some more and man i would really like to put out a double record whether or not we're going to do that this next record i don't know and i really shouldn't even be talking about another record like i say we really got to start pushing this thing more and we're doing the best we can you know and like you when you emailed me this morning that was like Wow, yeah, I got to come on and speak to Jason. And you're like one of my favorite interviewers, dude. I, I, I've told you on the uh, email, and you're just a lot of fun, man. And uh, I really dig your style. And, and thank you very much for, for, for helping us, you know? Yeah, well, I appreciate that very much, Tommy. And, you know, as a fan of your playing and your music and a fan of a human story and a survivor story, you know? Uh, a little you, bit of that. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, you, you, you've got that going and you prove it. Uh, and you didn't put out filler, 
you didn't take the easy road and you got together a good band of musicians. Everyone seems to get along. I had all of you on the show. And so I want to make sure the people who haven't heard it yet, there's still time. Nowadays, you can get music like that. You can go to resistantbite.com, uh, the website, and you can find um, the different packages because there's physical packages. and shirts. Oh, yeah. And we got a USB flying V thing you can get. It's really cool. You can just plug it right into your car, you know, and it's got the record on it. It's pretty cool. It's a flying V. It's black. It says resistant bite on it. Mm -hmm. It's got the logo on it. I love it. It's pretty cool. I think, you know, we just all have to keep talking about it, spreading the word, sharing it on our social media so that people realize that uh, that this music is out there and that it's good and that it's yeah. not trying to be anything that you've already done. It's new music. Thank you so much. Yeah. It is. And I, I got to say, man, that hat is definitely working for you, man. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I you wearing that just like hanging out at the club and shit, man. That's I was thinking all year round. <laughs> I'm bringing so, man, it back. I'm, I am so dark, everybody. I, I'm in a car and right in the parking lot. I feel like I'm way, I'm a dark person, though. So maybe that's, yeah, maybe yeah. it's worth <laughs> We've got a lot of people saying they love the CD. Yeah. And, uh, and here's somebody here. Uh, I've been meaning to tell you, thank you for turning me on to Resistant Bite. So I'm so happy to uh, to be turning people on to new music, especially in a time when music is, you know, new music is getting lost. You know, Tommy, I said yesterday, I had Stephen Piercy on and uh, from Rat, obviously, and we were talking about, is there a band that's new that will be around in 10 years? There might be some good bands, but to survive and have longevity in this difficult industry is tough. And... You've obviously been in the music business probably going on 40 years, I'm thinking. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what? We talk about this stuff, and me and Nate especially, and this is this is what this is the words we use for it. We talk about stuff like this band is our swan song. This is it, man. This is what we're gonna do. This is how we're gonna go out, man. So that to me, when he talks like that, and that's how I feel. You know, I, I think we could be around in 10 years. I wouldn't be surprised if we are. We, we get along pretty good, and we're loving the music we're making, and it's really been a special thing. So, uh, yeah. yeah well, and even though you're considered a new band, you guys are really uh, road dogs and have paid some serious yeah. dues and, and well, have an audience. We've all, been, we've all been out there, sure. Yeah, and, you, and thankfully, you uh, have an audience, and now it's just a matter of showing the audience that, hey, here is uh, uh, some good music. And I don't just say this. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I find, though, that even though, I, you know, I, my background's from Tesla and stuff, even with a new band, man, it's it's really tough. I don't think it matters really what, you know. I mean, me and Jeff had a band, that Bar 7 band, and it was tough for us to get the word out there. And it's been tough likewise with this, and especially it's just me, you know, from from that. And uh, not that the other guys, the other guys definitely pull their weight with it, but I was probably in the most popular band for, for, out of all of us. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's, it's tough, man. But you know what, man? We just love it. If the music, if the music wasn't right in there, and if I didn't believe in it so much, I wouldn't be so hyped. I'm not generally a real just gung ho person like I may come off on these interviews, but mm -hmm. I get really excited when we're talking about it. And usually I'm just like, bah humbug, just chilling out. <laughs> but mm -hmm. this, this record and this band excites me, man. It just does. Yeah, and which is not, my old age. Sorry, which is great. And uh, I'm just sharing people's comments on the screen. Yes. I know that you can't necessarily see all of it, but uh, some, yeah. Okay, yeah. And uh, and so uh, one of the other things that I wanted to ask you, Tommy, is what are your plans? Because this is a Christmas special. What are your plans for the holidays? You're a family man. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You know what? I'm not a big Christmas fan, and my wife is totally is, and um. So we, we do stuff, you know, we go to ground, generally Christmas, man. And this is the other thing. My wife's birthday is the 24th. Mm -hmm. so that our anniversary is the 26th and Christmas is the 25th. So we have like a triple header type deal around our house, right? Birthdays, Christmas, anniversary, it's a whole thing. So, uh, but generally we go over to grandma's on Christmas Eve and we hang out and do like a Christmas thing with the kids there open presents and they love that and then christmas morning at the house we open presents at our house and have a, a kind of a shindig there with just our family my kids and, and my wife and then uh you know and then the next day it's our anniversary you know we just we have a lot of fun it's a lot of uh, stuff and it's kind of stressful sometimes but uh 
There it Holidays is. can be that. Yep. Well, think about all think about all three things I just said. It, it can get crazy. Yeah. Now you, you you say you're not the biggest Christmas fan, but do you have a favorite Christmas song? I do have a favorite Christmas song. I, I will say I love 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 Christmas songs. I, I I'm not a big fan of Christmas, but the songs are so great. And the one that I love the most is Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire. The Christmas song. Frost nipping. You know, I love that song. It's just the best. The audience had no idea that they were going to tune in to see Tommy Skio singing. Uh, crooning. Uh, yeah, crooning. Crooning, yeah. Or whatever uh, it is, yeah. Question here for you is that do you still use Holbrook amps? I do. And someone asked me that on Facebook the other day. I, the thing is, is I, I love this guy made me these amps and he modeled them after this one Marshall, modified Marshall I got. And I, I, and he, the amps look just like Marshall's, right? They're made just, they look exactly like a Marshall, except they would say Holbrook. So I haven't put his, his, his logo, Holbrook logo on it. Cause I want to pretend that it's, I want to put a Marshall logo on it in the worst way, but he would kill me. So I've been leaving them blank. Right. But I try and put it out there that yes, I'm playing them, but there it is. People are wondering. So I'm in trouble. I think probably well, <laughs> I'm playing the hell out of them. I, I use it on the record. I use them live and they're, they're great. They're really great. Yeah. Well, trouble is nothing new to you, Tommy. I think you can, uh, uh well, I'm working on it. I'm working on trying to stay out of trouble these days. Actually. It I'm seems doing pretty like good too. It seems like you're doing very good. I and uh, so if anyone has a couple of questions for Tommy before uh, he gets going, then uh, feel free to ask those because it's very rare that we have uh, him live. You know, usually the show is recorded. So oh, this is live. See, I didn't know that. That's great. Yes. Yeah, it was going to be recorded. Yeah. No. So all I these people... seen that it says live right there in the left hand corner. So <laughs> that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> um, it could have been we could have been staging it, you know, like uh, yeah. so many. No, we're for real, dude. Yeah, like so, like like uh, so many things. So people have a, a question, and this is a fun thing. And I and I like I said, I was honest about uh, the the album, and I was really excited to have you on the show, especially that first time, because there is a thing about protecting your image. People ask you stupid questions. Half these interviewers don't even listen. They they, they sure. come to one thing, and so I really wanted to make sure that you knew that it wasn't going to be the same questions. Um, all over again. Well, I mean, that's part of my attraction to you, Jason, is that you're real. And I, I know you do enjoy the record. I know that in my heart, just from you to, I can, you know, I can just tell. And um, I took a lot of LSD when I was a teenager, so I can see through things and I can just tell what people are thinking. No, but I'm fucked up like that. <laughs> but man, <laughs> you're just a great interviewer and you ask great questions and you're the bomb, dude. We love you. Well, thank you. Let's let's let some other people ask a couple of questions. Sure. How did you find Nathan Oots? Uh, Perry Richardson, that was in Firehouse, now plays in Striper, and you're having a guy from Striper on after me. He he might be outside any minute now. Yeah, tell him I say what up, mm -hmm. and uh, you might anyway, have a chance to say it yourself. Yeah. So Perry, um, you know, we were we had another guy we were working with, and it just wasn't working out. And we were like, man, this band is great. We need a great singer. So we, so Dave called up Perry and I said, hey, man, we need a singer. And we need one now. We need, he needs to be great. And Perry said, Nathan Oost, first thing out of his mouth, we called him. Nate was into it. Well, we, you know the story. If you go back and listen to a couple of your interviews, we, we've told it. And, uh, man, awesome. And we really are thankful. And you know what? We didn't thank Perry on the record. And I... I bitched about that on my Facebook page, and he understands, but uh, I feel bad about that. What do you well, think of the record? What's up? Well, it's it's funny that you mentioned Striper. Oh, uh oh, there's, there's somebody at the door. Here he is. Uh, I don't know if you hey. guys have ever. I don't know if you guys have met before. I, but... I have not met. Hello, how you doing? Hey, how are you? Good, man. Good. <laughs> Oz Fox, Tommy Skio, Tommy Skio, Oz Fox. Great to meet you, Tommy. Metal forever, man. Right and on, uh, man. Tommy was just telling us that uh, Perry Richardson recommended his singer Nathan Oots for his band Resistant yep. Bite. He's got a great band. Oh wow, that's awesome, man! Yeah, tell Perry I said hello, man. They opened up for us uh, in '92 or something for a whole tour, and uh, they, they, he's a great guy. 
Oh yeah, Perry's yeah. a wonderful guy. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Tommy, I appreciate you stopping by, and uh, and and again, I love the record, and we're so glad to see you doing well, and I hope you have a very merry Christmas. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jason. You're the best, man. You guys have fun, all right? Thanks, Tommy. Okay. Happy Christmas. I'll catch you guys later. Have fun. Merry Christmas. All right. Merry see Christmas. you later. <laughs> all right. Oz, how are you? <clears throat> Doing good. Jason, how you been? Good. It's been a while. And yes. uh, it would not be Christmas without uh, uh, somebody on the show who's Christian. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. couldn't think of any... I couldn't think of anybody more fitting than you. Uh, Oz, before we talk too much, and uh, I want to make sure that I say I had you on the show before you went in for your first brain surgery. This is earlier in the year. Right. You then went in for a second brain surgery. That's and right. everybody asks how you're doing. And Striper has a really great Patreon package with Q&As and things where they can find out about, about you and social media. But... Uh, I'm so happy, Oz, uh, that you're here. And just tell us how you're doing. Well, uh, you know, I guess since the last time I talked to you, I've traveled down a few challenging uh, uh, moments. Um, of course, um, uh, my first craniotomy was in March, and uh, they did that and woke me up in the middle of it so that they could uh, make sure I was able to play a guitar after they were done. Um, so that was quite uh, quite an adventure. Um, so, uh, but any, anyway, I got through that, um, um, had a pretty, um, pretty smooth recovery through that. And, um, and then, uh, actually about three months after that, I went to Massachusetts and recorded, a, a live in studio performance, uh, shot at, uh, Spirit House, uh, of, uh, Striper doing, the whole soldiers under command album from beginning to end. Um, so that was, uh, that was something, something to be able to do that, you know, kind of made me feel a little more confident about my plan, you know, that I was able to yeah. still get out and do it, you know? And, uh, so then, um, not too long after that, I had to come home and try to recover more and, and, uh, get ready for another surgery where they actually had to cut the back, uh, part of my, uh, left ear, the, the, had to cut it open and get inside and cut out another tumor that was in, in my inner, uh, well, actually it's between my inner ear and my brain stem. There was a tumor in there and they had to get rid of that. Um, so I did that one down in San Diego. And ever since then, um, I've taken the whole year off from doing any performing or anything just because I want to have a full recovery and, uh, come january i'll be recording again with the band doing a new striper album so oh, great yeah so other than that i feel great um you know i just have a little equ equilibrium issues every now and then but uh, i'm i'm pretty good you know i think it's uh coming back pretty well you know it, it it was obviously scary for you and scary for the people who love you oz i remember uh uh you seen you at the whiskey and wondering if this will be the last time you know you play. Uh, and last time we did the interview, wondering, you know, if this is the last time we, we're going to see you as the same, uh, you know, uh, fun loving Oz with the Santa Claus <laughs> using the chimney as a bathroom uh, uh, holiday sweater. <laughs> and, uh, yes, I haven't changed much. <laughs> you know, and so I want to say, Oz, that I, we've known each other for a long time through um, Sin City Centers and having you play and being in that band for uh, All Star lineup for quite some time, and uh, and every year you coming out and doing the annual Christmas show and mm. singing Feliz Navidad for the audience and and the other songs that you played on our holiday records and raising money for kids and uh, and charity and so it just wouldn't be a, a Christmas party Oz without um, having you here. A lot of people want to. Uh, 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 Wishing you happiness and health in the new year and prayers for you and Annie. Um, awesome. And, Thank you very much. I appreciate it, Jason. And everybody uh, else out there. Yeah, so, Striper's live harmonies are the best I've ever heard. A lot of uh, yeah. lot of blessed, lot of blessed to see you. A lot of God bless. Uh, oh, awesome. that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and I will say, and I say it in my interview, if anyone hasn't seen it, go back. Oz is one of the kindest people I know and has been such an amazing friend. Uh, we don't get to see enough of each other, but no one is seeing enough of each other right now. No, that's really been a big deal right now. I mean, even myself, I've had to kind of stay away from 
being around too many people just because if I get sick, you know, who knows what could happen up here. And, and I'm trying to just distance myself as much as I can, you know. But, yeah, uh, and it seems like that's the smart thing to do. Yeah. And then hopefully in time, um, you know, everyone will be uh, back. So tell me what uh, what is Christmas like at the Fox uh, home? <laughs> well, that's a that's that, that's not really an exciting question because not really much goes on here. Really, we actually. Well, you know, Annie Annie works quite a bit, um, and she's a person that works with people all the time. So for her, you know, having to have to come home from work and then go into a Christmas party isn't always the 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 best thing in her mind. You know, to do. Uh, she likes to be. Uh, home, just sitting in front of our 65-inch uh, Samsung TV and watching old movies, and we just take it easy and relax. I think, if anything, last year, I think for Christmas, we went to Black Bear Diner. They had turkey dinner. and Nice. <laughs> Black Bear Diner's nice, yeah. Yeah. So we make it real easy, you know, like that. Um, every once in a while, if somebody asks us to come over and Annie feels up to it, we'll go, you know, have a a little food at somebody's house, but, but not really that often, you know? So, well, I'm thinking we go to church on, on Christmas, right? Um, you, we, we sometimes do uh, Christmas Eve. Um, I've been pretty much at the church and sometimes even play Christmas Eve, uh, for the service and stuff. Uh, this time, probably not. I don't think right. that's going to happen. Um, no, better do it online. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and that's what we've been kind of doing is it will, sometimes we'll go to church and stay there watch the service in person but then we get out as soon as we can um and then uh we'll watch a lot of it online so you know yeah oz uh, a favorite christmas movie um favorite christmas movie um oh my gosh well um is jesus christ superstar a christmas movie (laughs) no I wouldn't consider that a Christmas movie. No. That's more an Easter movie. Easter movie, right? Yeah, yeah. I gotta get. Uh, it but but you know, I think one of my favorite all time Christmas movies ha- has to be. Um, it has to be. It's a Wonderful Life. I mean, it's a classic. I'm and, with you. Um, it's one of those kind that you know you can watch and uh, you know you can watch it every year and uh, get get some fun uh, spirit out of it. You know. And, it uh, never gets old either, you know. No, it's, no, it doesn't. Not dated. And, I mean, I've been. I mean, for me, I'm more of that type of person these days. Is getting into the classic movies and uh, watching. I've been since uh, the lockdowns and since I've been uh, recovering and whatever. I got into first. I got into like Gunsmoke uh, mm-hmm. episodes, which was pretty amazing. And then um, now I'm watching Grit Channel. I don't know if you ever get Grit Channel. That's, That's the westerns, uh, right? Yeah, it's all westerns. So um, we kind of got turned on to a lot of those, you know, and have some fun with that. I think, you know, honestly, I think that's what's missing in Vegas is some of that saloon entertainment, you know, with mm-hmm. the girls and the, you know, the old time uh, bustiers and, you know, singing with the up, up, upright piano and all those great wow. uh, entertainers of the back in the day, you know, such and so. Have you ever seen, uh, we just watched How the West Was Won and Debbie yeah, Reynolds is in it. Oh yeah. my gosh. And then the entertainment that they did in it was just awesome. I mean, they it need show- to have something like that here, you know? <laughs> it shows you how bad modern things are when we have to go back and find these classics, you know? I, I can't believe that we can't. Uh, why wouldn't some casino have a actually a classic show like that? I think it would. people would love it, you know? Um, yeah. That's my opinion. I, they've tried everything else. I, you know, you would think that they would. Uh, uh, get into that uh, as well. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, but anyway, yeah. It's a wonderful life's cool. Um, I always like planes, trains, and automobiles. That was a good one. <laughs> I think that's a Thanksgiving movie, in my opinion. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, it but is. it's great too. Very funny, and yeah, you know, uh, these traditions. You know, it, we it, we have we look forward to seeing them every year. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. This is kind of fun stuff to watch. And you know what I watch for Halloween? Is the old 1935 uh, Frankenstein movie? Oh, the incredible! The Frankenstein movies are incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah those are great. I, I can watch those every Halloween. Yeah, they, yeah. they show those old Universal movies on the Peacock channel now. Okay. And, uh, yeah, yeah, Fra- yeah, Frankenstein, Brian Frankenstein, Oz. On this show next week, I've got a kid. It's an actor named Donnie Dunnigan. He's now 87 years old, 
He was the voice of Bambi in the original Disney Bambi, but he appeared in the movie Son of Frankenstein. He's actually the grandson of Frankenstein, but he starred with Boris Karloff in Bela Lugosi. He's the only person alive. Uh, oh and and, it, what a, it may, and he talks about making those movies as a child. It's really That's incredible. so awesome, man. What a guy to know. That's yeah, so awesome. I, it was really an honor to talk to someone, you know, people like that. I don't know how many more, uh, you know, how many more we're going to have. And he didn't never told anybody that he was an actor. He joined the military 57 years, three Purple Hearts, and never, ever told anyone until much later that they found him that, you know, he was a famous actor. Wow, man, that's awesome, man. It's great that you know him. It's yeah. Awesome. Oh, it was uh, it really made for a. Uh, um, a fun interview and this has been a fun thing to do you know all year i've been doing these shows and oz you came on as a friend before you know now i got a billion subscribers everyone will come on that's great <laughs> but back then i you know i had to beg my friends and uh <laughs> i tell the story oz about it's in our other interview where we had to do a sin city rejects punk rock show opening for the sin city centers and mm. our uh, guitar player couldn't make it and you yeah. said i'll do it just don't call me Oz Fox. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna be Jesus for the night. Yeah. And, <laughs> and you dressed in your punk clothes and you played. Uh, I said that you won first place in the Striper uh, lookalike contest. Or, <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. That was a great. That was a great night. We had fun that night. Just so much fun. We we've had so many uh, good times in here. And our next guest, who who should be here any minute, I want you to say hello to him when he gets here. Uh, shared a lot of those memories with us as well, but I'll keep that as a, as a surprise okay. uh, for, for a minute. But uh, it, it's, it's like I said, it's so good to see you uh, in person, you, you know what I mean? Or close to in person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm really, believe me, every day I wake up and have breath is it's, I'm thankful, you know, to have another day. And, yeah. Uh, I, I, your, your story certainly should motivate people. Uh, you know, life is not a, you, we're not guaranteed anything, uh, right. you know, Make the most of it. Question here was, do you still have the old Mesa Boogie amps from back then? If you do, how many do you have? Uh, uh, well, well, I, I actually, actually sold, sold most, most of my of boogie, boogie stuff, stuff. And, and some of it got stolen out of a, um, a storage unit that I had way back uh, yeah. right after I went through a breakup with my first wife and put it in storage. And then somebody broke into my storage unit and st stole all of my boogie stuff. Uh, the, the good thing, though, is I still have my old mark 2c that i purchased a way back and it's sitting right in front of me right here i use it to record with here at home um and uh so i still have that i also have an old what they call a 1980 cabinet which has got 412s in it and it's got kind of a almost like a a, a sheet metal uh grid uh grill on front in front of it um it's really heavy it's got some heavy speakers in it and uh I got one of those in my garage, and uh, yeah, I'll bring that out every now and then mm -hmm. to, if, I, if I really need it. But for the most part, Vegas, you know, they don't want you loud, so you can't really use it. You know, we've learned that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Qu question is: Does Oz have any kids or grandkids? Oh my gosh! Yes. Uh, well, I have three kids. Um, they're all grown up now. I've got Paul, Leah, and Tara. Uh, Paul's the oldest, and uh, and then I have three grandkids. I have uh, Vera. Cora and um, uh, Giancarlo. So two girls and a boy. Uh, Cora is the oldest. She's 10. No, she's 11. She just turned 11. And then uh, Vera's eight and Giancarlo's a year old. So. Yeah, you know, you're, 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 you're busy. I can be very busy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I spoil him like crazy. <laughs> well, that's what you're, that, I think that's what you're supposed to do for sure. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, it's great uh, to have him. This is really people, awesome. People saying they love the Grover Jackson story, and yeah, and that's in the uh, that's in our first interview. You can go back. Oh yeah, yeah. Now, okay. So now, as you know, um, uh, of course, uh, in the spirit of giving, uh, I've had some awesome. Uh, uh, I like this guitar behind me. Uh, this acoustic guitar I just got from Line Six. They uh, sent it to me, and it's uh, the new NX model, which I wanted to have a classical guitar on hand because when i record sometimes you got to have that sound and uh so they sent me that really nice uh, um classical nylon string guitar which is really super cool so that was kind of a fun christmas thing to get you can see it right there in the background 
And then the other thing that came in was a new Variax by Line 6, which I just got it back today. And this... Wow. It's got uh, the, the Ozfox uh, Rising Sun pattern on it. So this is what I've kind of gone with over the last few years and uh, i'll be taking this out on the road with me because it's got a lot of fun things it does i have to put all the electronics back inside of it i took the whole computer out and uh <laughs> so they could do this uh this is actually a wrap job it's not nice it, look, it looks great yeah yeah they, they did a wrap i got a company that uh took it and wrapped it for me so pretty cool not bad. <laughs> I noticed. I think you got westerns on in the background, Oz. Now, are, are you in? <laughs> really? Are you in? Is that your office? Yeah. Or studio? This, this, this is my home studio. Yeah, I've got uh, uh, a whole Pro Tool setup in here with you know stuff to plug my amps in. I've got about four or five computers in here and and uh, and a bunch of screens behind me. In fact, if I back out a little bit. Oz is a pro. He's got a whole uh, whole thing. Look at this place. Wow, well, hold on. Let's look at your. It's a big mess in here. <laughs> wow. No, no, no wonder you don't have to leave the house. That's right. I don't have to leave the house. <laughs> that, you're going to isolate. This is the way to isolate. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, and of course, if I if I really don't if I don't feel like doing any of this, I just I just hang out with my wife. You know, my wife and I. Yeah, you know, there's Annie. There's a picture of Annie. Um, so we just, uh, you know, spend a lot of time together and, uh, you know, we keep each other company, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, that, that's, <laughs> a, that's a good thing. Yeah, it's good. It's uh, That's the best gift you, you can have being with people that uh, uh, that make you happy. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and support and keep company. And she's been through a lot with you. Oh, my and, gosh. If, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be around. To be honest with yeah. you, yeah. And uh, well, I, I tell you, Oz, uh, I don't know if you, you hear this, but uh, hold on. Somebody at the door, Oz. Somebody at the door. Somebody's Let's see who door. it is. Hold on. It's Jizzy Pearl. Jizzy. <laughs> you've Merry heard Christmas. of the uh, you've heard of the Pope of Greenwich Village. Yes. I'm the Pope of Santa's Village. <laughs> <laughs> it would not be Christmas without Jizzy Pearl uh, under the tree. <laughs> awesome, man. How you been? I'm literally under the tree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. How's it going there, Oz? I haven't talked to you in a long time. Oh, my gosh. I'm doing okay. How have you been? You and Nina doing good? Yeah, we're doing good, dude. I mean, you know, we're just... Uh, surviving just like everyone else this uh this this situation right 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 well you know i've kind of been in my own kind of thing recovering your hair's growing stuff. back yeah it's growing back a little bit i think if anything i'll probably just let it be it do, do what it does you know it grows like a weed so yeah, that's <laughs> i've got to say uh you know we all have uh spent a bunch of time together sin city Sinners here my favorite lineup of the band uh sin city Sinners, we called all stars was Oz and Jizzy Pearl and sometimes Rowan Robertson as well, uh, you know, from Dio at Blas Elias from Slaughter yes. on Drums, who's right now, he would be here, but he is playing with the Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Uh, two oh, shows for him. Two shows daily, yeah. And then uh, Scotty Griffin, who is in uh, 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 LA Guns. Maybe not the LA Guns, but a LA Guns, but he is, uh, he's in one. Jizzy, you were in a LA Guns also. You were in a few LA Guns. <laughs> I'm in several LA guns, <laughs> multiple, <laughs> plural. But uh, and it was we we played so many fun shows and got along, and that was a band that had a history of uh, 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 you say jackasses. Until I met you guys, and we really always had a really fun time. Yeah, we and we played a bunch of those uh, Christmas toy drive things. Those were good. Yep. yep. Yeah, we did a lot of uh, every year uh, at Christmas time. We'd play the Hard Rock Hotel when there was a Hard Rock Hotel. And we did the uh, the toy drives and play the Christmas music and uh, and really and the Marines were there to collect and we really did a lot for people and, and had a good time and so this year this was the closest we could get to uh, entertaining for Christmas. That's okay. Well, all of yeah. us hanging out uh, virtually. <laughs> right? v virtually, at least we get to see each other. Oz, I'm so glad that you were able to stop by and uh, and everyone is happy to see you. 
and know that you're, you know, January, you get back to work with Striper and we, we miss you and hope that, uh, hope we'll all be seeing each other soon enough. Yes. Hopefully sooner than later. Right. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Okay. Awesome. Oz, Merry Christmas. All right. Merry Christmas to y'all. Take care. Jiz. We'll Take talk easy, to you again man. soon. Take it easy. Thanks for having me, Jason. Thank you. All righty. Oops. Hold on. Let's get Jizzy back and perfect. All right. Well, Jizzy, Jizzy welcome. Look at that tree. That's quite the, uh, that's quite the, uh, display. Yeah. We got a whole festive, uh, 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 I've had a lot of time to work on it. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> it, what, it, what an interesting show. I don't know if you've been watching, but we started with Tommy Skeo. And then Tommy Skeo and Oz Fox met for the first time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, only at a Christmas party do you have such different personalities, you know. Uh, he's it, definitely a personality, that's for sure. Yes. I mean, he's doing good, though. He's got a good record, and he's doing good. And, uh, and we were talking about not seeing each other. But Jizzy, you and I are going to be seeing each other a lot next year, it seems like. I'm uh, out with Stephen Piercy. Right, uh, right. Tour managing. And, and hopefully, listen, hopefully we're going to be seeing each other. Let's hope that things stay open. And Yeah, uh, I saw some of that uh, that thing you did the other day. What did I do? Steven. With Steve. Oh, the live. Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, I thought it was, he was, he was funny. You know, he's obviously uh, a character. People think he's drinking. That's just how he is. He's a big kid and yeah he he is he he really is a, a a teddy bear i mean once you get to know him he's a really nice guy you know what I mean? he and he's funny too because he'll say like because obviously for who those who don't know jizzy sang for rap for about eight years i think right about seven seven yeah don't i don't want to age age it uh but yeah, he uh yeah. But Steven will tell you all the good stuff and then he'll come on the air and he won't say anything bad about anybody you know what i mean like oh bobby blotzer is a Gentlemen, gentlemen, you know. What I mean? but, well, the thing about it was, and I and I've said this before, is that uh, when I was singing, you know, when I was doing his gig, he never uh, he never badmouthed me in the press or on the internet or anything like that. And I always thought that was such a, a we were we were both gentlemen, you know what I mean? I mean, he knew it was just a gig, and he knew that there was, you know, what I was dealing with, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and then. Then when I was uh, when I saw him again, you know, we could we could hold hands and and kiss like lovebirds. And you sang on stage together as well. I mean, you know. Yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Now, anyway, but so if, and for those who don't know, I'm sure you do. Jizzy is the lead singer for Quiet Riot, and that is the reason why I'm saying we'll see him because there's a lot of shows with Piercy and uh, uh, Quiet Riot next year, and I think there's one. Fairly soon. Uh, uh, Mohican Sun in Connecticut. I think that's in, in February. Yeah. And so let's hope let's hope that happens. It uh, should, I, you know what? It should happen. I mean, of course, you know, I'm sure everyone in Europe said we'll never lock down again. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I know. Absolutely. And well, and you were supposed to go to Europe to do Love Hate. Is that yeah. on hold? It's it's not happening. I mean, they're literally talking about closing down the UK. Um, it's just one of those things of the, the, the amount of time and money and risk that goes into uh, touring. You know what I mean? You just can't take a chance. And, and here it's a day to day thing. And I'm hearing, oh, you know, the UK is going to lock down again. It's only going to be two weeks. You mm -hmm. know, which that's how it starts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's how they uh, that's how they get you. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people excited that Rudy Sarzo is back uh with quiet ride you've done a few shows I'm with him now rudy sarzo's back yeah how's it been going he puts a spring in my step <laughs> i mean he uh he's very he's 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 just a easy guy you know what i mean he doesn't have a bad word to say about anybody and he's just he has a great love of life and uh and he's just fun to be around you know what i mean and people love him who do you think is the more uh, a, a flashy dancing bass player? Do you think it's Juan Crucier or do you think uh, Rudy? I'm going to have to say Rudy. I'm going <laughs> to have to say Rudy. Uh, Juan, Juan is a, is a, is a, is a, he's a whole different, he's on another level of, yes. um, of mischief. You know, ridiculousness. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And I Rudy kind of invented the whole licking as far as I know and the style and, yeah, yeah. I mean, once he started licking, it was it was downhill from then. 
<laughs> for, for for yes, for all the uh, for all the clones. Uh, anyway, everybody's uh, happy to see you, and um, and so talk a little bit of Jizzy about. Well, first of all, I don't, you know Jizzy, I don't know. We, you don't strike me as the Christmas. Uh, I don't know if that's a word, fella. But uh, do you have a favorite Christmas uh, movie? Uh, no. No, I didn't think so. I, you know what? The thing about Christmas and holidays and stuff like that, my wife and I are healthy and that's, that's enough Christmas for me. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I mean, I don't, I don't need a whole lot of nonsense. You know, I don't need a whole lot of Walmart Best Buy nonsense to make mm -hmm. me feel good about myself. If everyone's healthy in the household, you know, if the dog's healthy, you know, then uh, look at that face. <laughs> yeah. Then, uh, then that's good. It's all good for us. I, I got to say, though, on the Christmas note, uh, we did a Sin City Sinners record, uh, you know, a while back, a Sinners Christmas, and you came up with an arrangement of Oh Holy Night, and I think it's the best song on the record, and it's great. And uh, I tried to access it, but it's on Spotify only, isn't it? Yeah, but I, I you know, uh, I own all that, and so now it's a matter of putting it back out, you know, after... Uh, some of the nitwits are not involved anymore, uh, and I'm the head nitwit in charge. Uh, you know, we'll get that music uh, back out. And it's great, and I and I think uh, I wanted to. I actually saw it, and I wanted to listen to it. I remember it being really good. I mean, we just sort of banged it out in an afternoon, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I mean, you you wrote, you know, a chart and how you wanted it, and came in, and we did it at uh, uh, Tom Parnham Studio. And it's yeah. great, and it's a real fun. I listened to it last night. I had to go through my emails to find the the, the original um, track, but it's great, and we should get that out for people to hear. Maybe I'll put it up on the on their Facebook. Uh, yeah, no, it was killer. It was killer. I mean, yeah, that 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 was a good time. You know what I mean? Back back. I mean, nitwits notwithstanding, as you say, mm -hmm. um, it was just a good time. I mean, that was a good. Vegas was different. Then. Vegas was was it seemed like it was just uh, more of a community. I uh, completely agree. It, everyone started going their own ways, and everyone started competing, and it became uh, a little silly. Yeah. Uh, few questions. Uh, um, any chance of a Quiet Riot album? That's a good question. Does that ever come up? Uh, yes. Um, there's there's actually a bunch of songs that are um, semi written. Some are done. Uh, it's just been kind of kept under wraps, you know what I mean? The whole thing about bringing Rudy back, and and so there's there is new material. Yes, there is for sure, and it'll 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 probably be out next year. I mean, I don't know how many songs if it if it's going to be an EP or a record or you know, but mm -hmm. uh, I've def there's definitely some some songs, and they're and they're good, and they're good. Yeah, and it's a good and it's a good lineup. Uh, I can answer the first part. No, Carlos is not in Quiet Riot. Alex Grassi plays guitar. Who plays drums? It's Johnny Kelly. Johnny Kelly was in the band Typo Negative and is a great right. drummer, great guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it's uh, like I said, I mean, it, I'm hoping 2022, as I hope, as I know you do, I hope it's just kick ass and it's and, and we can get to back to some degree of normalcy. I, I don't know if it'll ever be normal, normal again but just gigging just playing and stuff like that I've, I've been playing for the last half of this year and um you know it's just it would be nice if if we could sort of get rid of that albatross around everyone's neck and and get back to work well you explained it to me a little bit because i haven't been on the road since it's begun and how states and masks, are good. it's all going to be different. You go to different places. And yes, everyone looks at things differently uh, than um, data. And so uh, it is a new world out there. And the airports are frustrating. And uh, it's, let me tell you, airports, airports suck sometimes. They really do. Because you have yeah. to, you have to, you know what I mean? I, I, I just wearing a mask for eight hours, 10 hours is, is rough. It's just rough. And people are really cranky. And I try, I try traveling with Stephen Percy. He's masked up sometimes. He has a couple of gets to put it back on. And now you have a whole, you know, a, a, whole, a whole thing. It's it's tough. You want to know the name of your dog? The name of my dog? What's the Frenchie's name? Ugh. 
It's Maggie. Maggie. <laughs> the dog is stealing the show. Uh, everybody loves a. Uh, uh, everybody uh, loves a Frenchie. Just try owning one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I know that you went to uh, you know Frankie Bennett memorial service. It was. Uh, they had to do it a year later because he passed away at the beginning of the COVID. Uh, uh, I forgot to say that word on this channel. I forgot. Uh, still, still. <laughs> Keep that in mind, Jesse, if you ever do any broadcasting. Uh, they, don't, they don't like that word on here. Stay, but, away, uh, stay away from the C word. You stay away from the C word, yeah, the big C. But you, can, uh, uh, but you had to bring the dog with you because the dog does not like to be uh, at home or boarded or any of those things. Yeah, I stayed in a in a lovely little crack hotel uh, in in Hollywood. It was it was pretty gnarly. It was pretty uh, it was pretty pretty gnarly. I just gotta say. I mean, just was, going for talking. coffee in the morning was like uh, uh, what's what's Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. You were the Yucca man all over again. You know, uh, we stayed near Yucca. Yeah, yeah you it, could it hit the Playboy pretty, liquor if you if you wanted yeah, to. Yeah, it was. Plowboy. Plowboy. I say plowboy too, but I thought maybe you wouldn't. Uh, some people correct no, you. I, I remember. It's plowboy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We went to the rainbow and, and they did that sculpture thing. And then we went to the funeral and, uh, you know, it was, it was, you know, it was what it was. And uh, yeah. So and it, it seems like a, 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 it was a nice way to also pass the torch a little bit. Frankie did uh, like Johnny Kelly, and I believe he chose him to, to fill in for him, right. and, to, and he wanted the band um, to continue. And so that's a, a, that's a good thing. Jizzy, tell me a little bit about what, what you've got going on next. I don't know if you're ready to talk about everything. Oh, we, we got something right here. Hold on. Yeah, this is my new book. Is this an exclusive, Jizzy? Well, Just say it is. I was just saying. <laughs> yeah, there's no honesty in media. This is my new book. It's called um, "All the Devils." It's it's look how thick it is. Three hundred pages of of pure nonsense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there a and, Braille uh, edition? I'm sorry. Do you have a Braille edition? Yeah, yeah. Large <laughs> large type for us old guys. Yes. So tell me about the book. When does it come out? It comes out uh, in a couple of weeks. It comes out in January. And um, yeah, you know, I'm doing a, I got a YouTube channel now, J Pearl TV. And um, it's just sort of my way to have fun. You know what I mean? And, and, and stay away from politics and the C word and all that stuff. It's just me sort of telling rock and roll stories and having music. And uh, it's, I, I, I now understand the uh, what you go through putting together shows and stuff like that. It's it's a lot of work to, yeah, to, uh, to put together an hour or for me, eight minutes. <laughs> well, and then Stephen Pierce is 45 minutes late and doesn't know how to get online. And then all of a sudden you just got to, you know, find something, um, you know, to talk yeah, about. No, it's, it's good though. You know, I, I, I wanted to do a YouTube thing for a while, but I wanted to do something that I, for me, personal, you know what I mean? So it's just, it's rock and roll stories and it's fun and, and uh, you know, J Pearl TV, maybe people will dig it. I, I think it's, you know, it'll be pretty cool. You got to go and subscribe, J Pearl TV, and you can find this. You got to ring the bell. You got to ring the bell, yeah. You got to uh, you gotta go to his website, jizzypearl.com, and you can find the... Uh, Jizzypearl.net, my son. Oh, dot net, sorry. The, the other... The Jizzy Pearl, Someone's the adult film actor. on jizzypearl.com. <laughs> I believe it. Um, I'm serious. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Uh, the, the, yeah, but and I see somebody saying that everyone's coming out with a book. I got to point out, Jizzy, you were writing books long before. Long before. Yeah, yeah. I, I knew Gutenberg. Yes, you were writing books long before anybody else. You're going to get to hear well, the bell in a minute because I see somebody's waiting outside the window. He's he's gonna make an appearance, and uh, but uh, another Vegas uh, resident, current Vegas resident. But uh, anyway, but you were writing books long before other people were, and your books weren't. You didn't write a rock tell all. You you wrote. Well, it's it's real writing. I mean, you know, I I know, I know a lot of rock books are sort of just transcribed. I think everybody knows that. You know that there's no budding Charles Dickenses. 
in our rock world, but I actually do write books of short stories and it's real fiction and it's, uh, and I got them all available at my wife is pimping for me right now. Available nice. at uh, jizzypearl.net if you guys are interested and subscribe to my J Pearl TV channel. And, and I'll be talking to you soon enough when this comes out, I'm sure you'll want to. Uh, yeah, well, I'm looking forward to reading it. it. And I'm looking forward to uh, getting it word out on the on the show. Uh, hold on. You hear that? That's the doorbell, Jizzy. Just like a Perry Como, a Bing Crosby special, you never know. You have, you have spared no expense. None. You never know who's going to show up next. Here he is. He's the most underrated interview of the year. Everyone loves him. He's now a media. He's a media no, darling. Johnny I'm Monaco. Starting. I'm starting. Oh, there he is. Hold on. I'm starting this. I have to do this interview. Johnny, Guys. welcome. Hi. Hi, Jason. Now Hi, you know Jizzy Pearl, right? Of course I do. Yeah. I've seen some of your uh some some of your podcasts. Oh. I looked I looked one up and I watched the one with Jason, and you know how YouTube is, then they give you 12 more. Yes. He's got a great so, one where he talks as Donnie V or Charles Manson, and you can't tell which is which. Well, it's it's a lateral move. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> anyway, but but uh, Jizzy, I, I thank you so much for stopping by and, spread, and spreading some holiday cheer with everybody. You'll come back. We'll talk about the book and uh, all the other things that are going on. Okay, guys. Have Thanks, a good Jizzy. Christmas. And, good seeing uh, you, Jizzy. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. Absolutely. Merry Christmas. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. All right, Johnny. Welcome. Hi. Now, Johnny, Johnny, I've got to tell you. Your interview was the unsung interview uh, of the year. And a lot of people weren't necessarily uh, uh, familiar. Maybe some were. Maybe some thought you were a jerk. I, I don't know. But everybody, uh, <laughs> everybody loved uh, your you interview. Have to post that interview, that comment. That was you. The only people I think are jerks are the ghosts I live with. No, I, 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 I've seen those um, comments, and uh, this isn't even on. I, I've seen those comments. This one's way better. I've seen those comments, and I, I, was in, I thought it was, there were some pretty positive ones, so I thought I was onto something. But there were like three or four that were kind of mean, and those are the ones I'd like to focus on. But that's a good ratio, though, three or four. I mean, you should see some of the people I have on here and the, and the horrible things that they say about them. Uh, you know, I, um, 65 comments I've been counting. Every day I go on there and I'm like, why isn't it going up? You know, what, what did I do wrong? Why did I move here? And then um, I look at the three people that were mean and um, I have to reevaluate everything I said. Uh, you know, there was a couple of mean ones. Someone said something about um, stop complaining, and another person said, um, "I hope you die." Um, <laughs> so, hope you get hit by a truck. Uh, someone comes over to your house in the middle of the night and kills you in your sleep. The, <laughs> they were those are a little extreme. Yeah, I mean, some people are are very mean. Yeah. Well, that's you know, I, I I look at those and I try to be you know uh, even Stephen on them, and I'm like, you know, what can I do? to you know improve because you read the good ones and though that's easy but i like to focus on the bad ones because then i could really you know try to improve well it's also a little therapeutic sometimes we all need a little dose of uh, uh of, of horrible jealousy and bitterness from uh you know people who are internet trolls or you know you, you you get what i'm saying yeah well you know uh you can't make everyone happy and uh i i, I try my hardest to uh to make everyone, you know, happy. Try to be fair. I'm like, you know, Switzerland. I think, though, so, uh, you know, we, we talked a little bit about being Enough's Enough, but we talked about other things we're complaining at all. The show is about talking about people's uh, experiences, and I, I thought it was great. And um, what I liked what best is that people went out and listened to your music and didn't know it. A lot of people said they were checking out uh, the projects. Uh, questions around, uh, have you ever worked Walker. Um, I have not ever worked with Book, uh, Butch Walker. I like Butch Walker. I've seen him play live a bunch of times. He's great. Um, but no, I've only met him a few times. When I see a question like I figure that 
you know, something like that. I feel like someone to knock it down. I figure, oh, if they know, Joker, you know, waste. We have so much. Uh, back to me up. It's true. Sorry, it's it, it's a bad uh, reception. <laughs> it's just this place. <laughs> I uh, it's cutting in and out a little bit. Um, I can hear some parts of what you're saying. I could probably piece them together. Were you asking me about my book? I don't have a book. Well, in your see us, my pet. No, they don't al allow. Well, they do allow pets here, but it's like an extra twenty dollars a month. Actually, I do have someone here that would like to meet you. Perfect. Let's see if I can. can oh. <laughs> it's my Christmas. I was walking wow. outside the building over by the garbage cans and I just met the cutest little raccoon. And he um he's very friendly. You constantly need to feed him. Unless he can fight. No, he's easy. And um he's like he's just like, he's a nice little guy. He just can't stop eating cheese. But he's um he's my Christmas miracle. And uh, like I said, normally it's twenty five dollars a month extra for a pet. But we're not going to tell anybody. Jesus, <laughs> we're not going to tell anybody. <laughs> he's a, he's a little rambunctious. No, that, Let him more, back in his cage. Like, okay, I don't think that I think just, be when I when I need to really calm him down, I just hit him with a bat. Yeah, it's fine. Oh, well, and. Internet is. Yeah, is it me? Is is it is it both of us? I can't. I don't know. Uh, some people feel like that with two. The people in your you. The people in the comments are saying you're cutting out, so it must be. Oh, is that, yeah. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I have been drinking uh, a little bit, not a lot. Just just enough because uh, I haven't eaten all day. Because I always want to be prepared for a steak. I go out of the house every day and I'm like, who's going to buy me a steak? Usually it's a friend. Sometimes it's an enemy. And uh, I just always want to be prepared. So I, I just get this great jacket. This is a, this was a Christmas gift from last year. And I always carry enough A1 for a good T-bone. And... You don't know if you're going to have to spend a lot for the extras. So uh, this, you just can put these oh. right in the microwave. And they're fantastic. And you never know when you're going to need a good steak meal. I'm starving right now because this is like my dinner time. So it's all I can think about is eating. Why can't I hear you? Can, can, oh, you, hear? John, can you hear me? I mean, kind of. I mean, I'm trying to figure out. I guess I'm frozen on everybody else's screen. I mean, I can hear you a little bit. You sound robotic. I am your interviewer today, and I'm going to talk about John, you just entertain while I fix it. Okay, well, let's see. What can I do here? Don't do um, anything to get me demonetized. Okay, um, someone think of a... Uh, here, wait. Can we do tricks? Here, think of a card, somebody. Here, wait, wait. Did you see one? You got one? Okay, um, I'm going to think about the card here. Um, wait a minute. Is it this one? Is it this one? Is it any of these? Watch. I'm gonna shuffle them up really good. Now, it's somewhere lost in the deck. I don't know where it's at. It could be anywhere in my cards. Now, I'm going to look through the deck here. I'm going to try to find a card. I'm going to think about your card. Um, let me try to pull a card up to the top. Um, I want to think it's a black card. Is it this card? that what if i take that nine of spades and i just give it a little bit of a wave and i change it it's just it <laughs> uh, i hope that was it because uh i was taught that by uh, a very famous magician um he taught me only one trick he taught me that and he also taught me um how to get around uh paying the pet fee every month because he owned an alligator oh uh, I think there's more upkeep with that. So I I vouched for my guy. Here. I try to keep on schedule. I know you said something 
about Stephen Piercy not being on schedule the other day, which I watched the Stephen Piercy interview, and I got to be honest with you, I thought it was fantastic. I like him a lot. He's riveting. He's very honest, and he's cool. That's what I like about him. He's cool. He's not boring. And um, I, I just watched him, and I listened, and I learned, and um, I, I felt like I could we could hang out if if you know if he was paying for the room, we would definitely be able to hang out. What's a, it's Christmas, <laughs> you know, Christmas, the the, the miracle. Mm -hmm. Oh, he doesn't. He is really down on Christmas this year because he has a problem with the whole timeline. He's like, the, the earth isn't 6,000 years old. And I'm like, that doesn't matter. Are, are you back, Jason? I think. Hold now, on. There's two of you. What is happening right now? It's, it's wow, you are a wild guy. I mean, talk about LSD trips. Didn't they don't even see trip? me on this one. Well, I see two of oh, you. Oh, I see. I see. Hold on. This is like the most bizarre interview. Thank I'm God you're here. It, it, oh, well, I don't know about God, but yes, that's... um. <laughs> If you want to thank anybody, thank the unemployment line. Because if it wasn't for unemployment, I couldn't afford this mansion. No, it happens. Why is it still just Johnny? Tell him I'm down to Crazy Eddie's. Hold on, I'm working on this. And I got this potato is going to go to good use eventually. Or I might just go across the street to Outback because that's a lot easier. And, um, I have the door open because I was doing laundry earlier. And whenever you live in a place like this, the, the, okay. the dryer heats up the whole place. So I, I had to open the door. That's why my jacket on. Hold. Okay. It's okay. You want to go to bed? Go to sleep. Oops. Right. <laughs> Play with Okay. All right. All right. Now, can <laughs> we could have scripted that better. Can everybody can you, see me? Can you, Oh, that's uh, I see two of you. What's happening? Was, Can you mix um, uh, vodka and Jack Daniels? Because I ran out of all everything in my apartment. I don't even have food in the refrigerator, but I have elements of food. So I have um, like mustard and pickles, and there's some um, there's an onion in there. But you can't make any one thing. And I I got these these these. So I I drank this one. But I know there's something about brown and white. You're not supposed to mix them. So mm. I don't know if you should. Do you know anything about that? I know that I like to drink uh, champagne and ripple, and then I mix it together, and I call it champipple. Ripple? Oh, yeah. You live on the east side. Yes. Okay. That's right. Well, usually, I'm not a big drinker. But, you know, I was bored all day today. Was, went through about 160 songs. Uh, and I uh, got to the point to where, you know, I wanted to get ready for your interview. And I'm like, ah, what could give me some more energy? So I washed my face three times and I'm like, ah, I look a little red now. And I took a shower. I did my laundry. I'm like, well, what if I start drinking? That that would probably help. But I don't I don't feel any different. I mean, maybe that's not enough. All right. Now, now uh, let's, uh, uh, someone would like to know, what was your last guitar purchase? Uh, well, you know, I don't buy a lot of guitars. I, I, I don't like guitar players. I, I don't have like lots of guitars behind me on the wall. And, um, but I think the last one that I bought, um, I returned it. It was a $2,800 Les Paul. And when I realized that, um, it didn't have a whammy bar on it, I just took it back. <laughs> and, uh, I think the last guitar I might've bought was a Strat, Strat, an American Fender Strat, a really good one. And then I, I didn't like the frets, so I had them refret it with the stainless steel jumbos. And then I took it a step further and I took the finish off the fretboard and I accidentally scalloped one of the frets. So I only use it for Ingve solos, but it's really <laughs> it's really good. I I was gonna go for the Ingve joke if uh if you did it. Um <laughs> oh, careful time. People drink that. <clears throat> I might need God. you to uh I might need you to fill in. Uh, you know, Johnny, I don't know if you knew this. It's the, uh, do you like to be called Johnny or do you like to be called Monaco? Because for a while, people only called you Monaco. Well, you know what that is, uh, Jason? I think Chip coined that because he thought it would elevate the status, like having Madonna in the band. Mm -hmm. 
So I think having a one name, like a Bowie or a Madonna or a Kennedy, Dahmer, whatever it is, yeah. I think that that like elevates your status a little bit. So, you know, it makes the whole thing cooler. I, I, I'm fine with that. I mean, if I was in the army, I'd be called that. Uh, Johnny is, my, you know, my mom calls me that. If you Most were in the adults, army, you'd probably be called, you know, like a long hair, uh, uh, a pussy boy or something like that, you know. <laughs> well, I would have to completely retool this and uh, Johnny, go with the. I'm calling you Johnny. Do you, do you have a song called I Used to Be in Enough's Enough? I do, and it's on the iTunes, and um, they weren't very happy about that. I got a lot of views on that one. I got to listen and to it. I just thought it would be interesting. I took clips of, of um, them on, on, you know, Howard Stern interviews, and I just, you know, crafted, geniusly weaved them into guitar solos. Uh, Donnie V said it's my best song. I think mm -hmm. he's being cocky, but uh, and being mean to me. But um, uh, I thought it was funny. I, some gu guitar playing in there. Johnny, do you have any tattoos? You know, I don't have any tattoos. I, I'm really afraid of needles, and uh, also, um, also afraid of whatever the the new trend is going to be in ten years. So I yes. know if I got something on my, like, they'd be like, "That's so 1995." I'm like, you're right. Yeah. So. Uh, I, I'm still I trying to get rid of this tramp stamp that I got. And then I got this uh, 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 tribal ring around my arm. And, you know, it's it's out, of, it's out of style. It's very popular. It used to be where you used to be a rebel to have a tattoo. Now it, you're more of a rebel if you don't. But I, I don't have any piercings. All my piercings are internal. And I don't have any uh, tattoos. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with tattoos. I see a lot of good ones out there. I'm just kind of someone who, like, you know, if it's a little, if the line was a little off, Every day I'd wake up, I'd be like, burr, burr, burr. You know, Johnny. But I, for, for, first of all, I got to say, nowadays to be a rebel, things have changed. Now you got to cut your cock off, you know, <sighs> to be a rebel. You know, I, don't <laughs> wow. say that I don't know if that's politically correct, but nowadays it's much more extreme. But I'm with you, Johnny. I'm a little neurotic. I look at tattoos and I think there's nothing in my life that I want on my body that I can decide on for that long. I think you're right. Um, it's it's actually very accepted to not have a penis nowadays, or or you had one. I mean that that's like that's like a very in thing now. Um, I'm not. I'm not, for me. It's you know you don't have one, you have one. I'm in the elevator every day. I don't know what they got under there. I know they're looking at me weird. They're pressing the wrong buttons. The whole hallway smells like pot. So the last problem I have is if they have a wiener. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing I didn't have Oz Fox on right before you. You know what I mean? That worked. I. That transition worked out uh, well. Well, you know, Oz, he is a great guy, and I'm glad he is feeling better, and I'm I, I'm I'm so happy that that worked out for him. I I was raised Catholic, mm -hmm. and um, it just all took a turn when I did a little research and I looked it up, and I tried to figure out exactly you know the roots of where I'm from, you know, because I'm Italian Catholic, mm -hmm. and uh, you know I'm looking at it, and I'm like you know. Noah, you know, he, he built an ark, you know, and, and he was 500 years old. I, I'm not, that's not me saying that. That's what they tell you. So a 500-year-old man built an ark with no power tools or help in the middle of a desert, found two, not one, but two of every animal and species. I can't even find a drummer and a bass player to play in my cover bands. He found two of every animal, put them on the ark, went out there, parted the sea, if you know we are parting the sea you know mm, mm, david blaine i mean we know chris angel can part the sea that's mm -hmm. I mean, we know that well he but he's a, he's he's a very talented uh yeah, well he's, he's a very from, lives here in las vegas so he's yeah. he knows what he's doing by way of long island so you know he's got a lot of a uh, uh, skill what is christmas like in the monaco household you know uh jason um since i've my dad died uh, like uh, five years ago. It's Sorry, it hasn't yeah. been the same. And, and and sometimes, you know, even though we didn't talk every day and, you know, we didn't do a lot of things together, when you remove someone from a, from something, he was the glue, right? And I think even um, Piercy talked about this with bands. When you remove someone from from that, it just changes everything. And it changed it for me. And I, and you know, my, the rest of my family, they, we try to get through it and stuff, but it was, 
I just, it's been miserable for the holidays for the past five years. And now that I'm out here, it's even worse. (laughs) And it's like, you know, I don't know anybody out here. I, 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 it's different looking to me. The climate's different. The people are different. There's palm trees and the pool still open. I, I, I just, uh, I, I don't have a, I don't feel anything. I don't have a good feeling for Christmas and, I mean, I don't know what I'm going to do. I've been want to go ice skating, to... Johnny. I'll take you ice skating. You know, I, I do have ice skates. Um, I don't think I brought them here. I brought my bowling ball. We can rent. We can well, we can rent some and 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 then go bowling. I mean, maybe you could help me because I thought I was going to ask you, but are, you're Jewish, right? Well, that's an interesting question that uh, comes up quite a bit, especially when you work with anti-Semitic uh, uh, musicians, drummers min- mainly. But uh, uh, well, my mother is not Jewish uh, and my father is. So the problem then becomes, uh, your, your father is supposed to be Jewish. I've never had a bar mitzvah, but I like to be Jewish if it bothers people. You know what I mean? Like if someone says they, they're, if they're racist, then I would like to be Jewish. I'm black I, if it helps, you know, the cause. I just find it so ridiculous. Why would someone have anything be against someone who's Jewish? It, it doesn't even make any sense. You'd have to ask the former drummer for a uh, rat. Uh, but, <laughs> But I mean, I'm not going to name anybody. There's a yeah. there's a lovely young lady here, Daniela, and she would like to know if Johnny is single. I have a girlfriend. Oh, okay. Well, she lives in Missouri. She's uh, fighting the power, and um, she actually came out here and visited me uh, a couple weeks ago. We had a good time. I took her out. I t- took her to uh, the uh, Hoover Dam. That's nice. Um, yeah, only one of us came back, but right. she, uh, no, it, it, she, she, uh, she liked it. She had a good time. I took her around. It was just a couple of days. Uh, she's a good girl. You know, she's uh, working hard out there and I couldn't drag her away from all her animals and, and um, her family and everything. And uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I'm, I'm out here on my own, Jason. It, oh. I, he's, got I, the, he's got the holiday. He's got the holiday beaver. Um, <laughs> but that. Johnny, I want to, before the next uh, guest shows up at the door, I want to make sure, uh, you, know, you never know when Duke Fame is going to walk in. I want to make sure that we uh, dress. Uh, she says she found her soulmate. Yeah. Yeah, I'm working on that one. Um, like I said, I, I really need to finish it. I've been playing a lot. I have uh, two shows coming up um, this week. I, or, um, I'm playing um, Christmas Eve at Mandalay Bay. Mm-hmm. For some reason, they keep having me back, and um, I'm playing New Year's Eve at Mandalay Bay, and I, I just got done playing at uh, Level Up at the MGM a couple nights ago, and prior to that, it was at New York, New York outside. <laughs> it's a cold gig, and uh, so I've been playing all these shows, trying to learn Metallica songs that I should know, and uh, so I really do need to focus on that. But I'm trying to get that done as soon as possible. I I I, I got to get out of this place. I don't, I don't like it here, so I need to focus somewhere. Where there's more potatoes and steaks. Yeah, and so uh, next year though we're gonna, we're going to get to hear this new solo record of yours. Yes, I am for sure going to put it out. I do have clips, and I want to thank you for actually having me on um, the other day because it's really helped. Um, I got a lot of uh, hits on my uh, on my podcast, and right. I've seen a lot of views on my YouTube page. I would appreciate it if people would go and, and hit, uh, get me some more um, uh, signups on the Instagram because. Uh, I seem to be lacking in that. I think but, you um, keep all those uh, uh, follows. Follows? Yeah. Uh, what did I say? My, my, my younger producer says it's called follows. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, dear. Johnny, I, 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 um, he called I, you yeah. dear like he's a 71-year-old man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what to say anymore. You know, you can't, you can't, I don't know what to say. Say hun to people in the restaurants. Like, thanks, hun. And they look at you like, you know. Never mm. say ma'am. Ma'am sounds old. No, I, don't, I don't say that. Someone called me that once. Wasn't too long ago either. I'm like, excuse me. Well, I mean, in this new culture, uh, you know, maybe that's not, you know, such such a uh, such a bad thing. I think they thought I was transitioning. Well, and and again, there's nothing uh, wrong with that in this time, uh, Johnny. I can't tell you if if, the, if my internet had to go out, there was nobody more fitting to be there and save the day than you. Oh, uh, well, thank you. I, I do appreciate that. Although I don't have a book coming out. So um, I wouldn't know what to plug. Well, you just did. You plug. Uh, she said she's my soulmate, which is the brand new solo record for Johnny Monaco. And That's you, right. 
and you can listen to clips of it right now, and it's really good. Somebody asked your favorite band. I didn't think you'd give that interesting an answer, but why not? Favorite band? Well, uh, I'd have to say of all time, my favorite band would be the Beatles. Let me, well, I would say the Beatles too, but do you know a little band called Spinal Tap? <laughs> of course I know Spinal Tap. I well, used to be in it. Have you seen the movie Spinal Tap? Mm-hmm. Well, I, the funniest thing, uh, uh, Johnny Monaco, is if, if you listen carefully, oh, there's that doorbell again. Look who's here. <laughs> it's Duke Fame himself from Rough Cut, Paul Shortino. Hey. What's up, guys? How you Have doing? You, do you guys know each other? I don't think we've ever met formally, but uh, we Hi, will Paul now. Shortino, how are you? I'm a big fan. <laughs> Johnny's... Hold on. Let me, just, let, me just mute. let me just mute Miguel's mic. Okay, I got that done. Now, uh, uh, as Johnny Monaco's living in Vegas now, he was in Enough's Enough. He's got a solo record. He plays constantly on the strip. And uh, and Paul Shortino, we all know and love Paul. I'm glad Paul's here. Johnny, I'm going to let you go, and I appreciate it. You'll, we'll have you back. Thank you for having me. Uh, have a good Christmas. And Thank you. Give me a call. We'll go ice skating. Hi, Paul. Absolutely. Hey, We're going to do Merry it. Christmas. Merry you Christmas, too, my brother. God bless you. Have a happy new year as well. Okay, Paul. Now, hold on, Paul. My co-host is live right now at Rockefeller Center. Okay? Here he is. Wow. There's Miguel. Miguel, that's Paul Shortino. Paul, one of the Miguel. Brother. Rock singers. Pleasure to meet you. You too. And we wanted to see, for the Christmas special, we wanted to see what the, the big tree looks like. You're right now... Apparently, you're at Radio City Music Hall. And so yeah, there was, there, was, there was a little kid with blonde hair lost around here, and I, and I told him to go home, and he said he couldn't because he was home alone. But mm -hmm. I, um, I I got the cops. You know, they're, they're, he's, he should be okay now. Okay, so Miguel, show us around. Paul's going to watch with me. Uh, so, okay, what is New York like right now? Okay, now it's not that hot, actually. I mean, it's not that cold. It usually is colder, but now it's nice outside. People are out with their mask on. <laughs> um, and this is Radio City Musical. Hey, I know a guy that played Radio City. Yeah. Miguel, go down, go down to the tree. I'm going to talk to Paul Shortino, and then I'm going to bring you back. All right, all right. I'm going. We're, we're See you soon. Gonna, I'll check in very soon. Thank you, Miguel, for the update. Merry Christmas. Okay. Okay. Merry Christmas. <laughs> All right, so he'll be back. He, he'll be back live via satellite. Look at this technology we have, uh, Paul. It's unbelievable. As we see, well, Paul, I, I had a few of our old friends on tonight, and it would not be Christmas without having you here because you've come out and done so many of the toy drives with us, Toys for Tots. You do so much on your own for these great causes. And, uh, and it, it's, it's not Christmas without you. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you, Jason. And it's an honor to be here with you tonight. And uh, I wish everybody a merry, merry Christmas. Last night, I turned on uh, Netflix, or it wasn't Netflix, it was Amazon Prime to watch uh, It's a Wonderful Life. Because mm -hmm. it is a wonderful life, even though it's uh, kind of upside down right now. But we all have to look for the, the best in every day and the best in our fellow man. So I wish everybody a Merry Christmas and uh, a safe one at that. Yeah, I'm going to go see It's a Wonderful Life on Christmas Eve in the movie theater. It's become a tradition for me. And oh, that's uh, awesome. It never gets it never gets old. And no, uh, it doesn't. It's one of the greatest. They never thought it would be as a, a, as great a picture as it turned out to be. It was a flop, I guess, in the uh, theaters when it came out. But when TV came out when everyone had a television in their home, it became one of the most watched films ever in Chris on Christmas Day or during Christmas week. So yeah, it's absolutely. absolutely. It really is funny how that happens. Look, Paul, by the way, there is the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree. Oh, man. How cool is that? We can't be there in person, but at least we get to see it. Is that Mr. Rockefeller on the top there? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> he, he, owns, he probably owns the city. Absolutely. Uh, look how look, look how uh, look how great that is. Uh, so That's I'm glad beautiful. we 
I'm glad even via satellite we're getting to see uh, uh, the tree. And so, Paul, a few people asking, uh, uh, well, statement, Paul is one of the greats. That is 100% true. Um, uh, and a lot of people commenting about how uh, a hearing aid stars that you are the best on there, knocked it out of the park. I, I couldn't agree more. He definitely, Paul definitely stole the show. And that's wow. a thing a lot because a lot of great performers. There were a lot of great performers on that. And I, I'm blown away that you even feel that way. Thank you so much. Uh, I, uh, we all got to sing the song all the way through each guy. So Ronnie was the master behind the board, him and Angelo, uh, and picking out the best of everyone's performance. So uh, I was just uh, really lucky and grateful to be a part of something that uh, was so incredible to uh, be involved in. Every yeah. rock star I ever dreamed of meeting was, <laughs> was there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Paul, tell me a little bit about what is in the future for you. Uh, I see people ask about Rough Riot. I know that is done. but. Uh, right. I, I, the Rough Cut record is great, by the way, Rough Cut 3. I've talked about it on the show. I've had all three on the show. Uh, it's another great record that, you know, uh, in a hard time to get out, but I recommend it to everybody. We'll put links to these things. I'm like Oprah, my favorite things. <laughs> and uh, uh, Rough, uh, rough, uh, rough, rough Cut, cut. is so uh, so great. Uh, guess well, the I'm right Pearl. now, I'm writing them. Uh, we're almost done with it. Um with the King Cobra record and it's with Carlos Cavazzo on guitar uh, and Rowan Robertson. It's none, uh, uh, just the only two original guys are uh, Carmine, which is his band and uh, Johnny Rod. Mm -hmm. And uh, the album is titled Music is a Piece of Art. And um, the cover is done by a artist um, here in Las Vegas. He's a tattoo artist, Chris Connick. And, uh, He's working on the the cover, and it's an it's an amazing piece of art. They're actually uh, it's going to be released on Cleopatra Records in 2022, probably around late April, early May. Um, they're actually going to release it on vinyl as well, uh, which is kind of cool. Kind Very of cool. Back, kind of going back in our time. I just finished a record also uh, with um, uh, Tracy G. Mm -hmm. from uh who initially was in world war three and then did some stuff with ronnie james dio and uh, that um, record is called blue dahlia and it's uh it's got some really cool stuff on it it's kind of like gary moore meets led zeppelin it's a cross between those 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 genres of music the old heavy blues and kind of what gary moore uh, really really shows off Tracy's playing actually. And actually uh, a lot of uh, parts of my voice that uh, I don't get to use that often. So uh, <clears throat> well, your, voice, your voice gets better uh, uh, with age. I'm not trying to age you, but uh, <laughs> uh, the, the Rough Cut 3 record, for example, does not sound like somebody who is, uh, you know, I think you're probably 60, 61 now, right? Oh, I wish I was. 68. 68 years old. It's amazing, Paul. You, you look great <laughs> and you sound great. And, hey, you uh, know, uh, Jason, I was looking through some of my video footage last, uh, it was last night, actually, and found uh, some clip of us doing Toys for Tots at Vinyl. And I think that was, uh, you You had, uh, I think it was uh, some of the Sinners guys there, you know, if it wasn't the Sinners. And uh, I came up and sang, bells will be ringing this time of year. And uh, please come home for Christmas. And uh, I pulled that up last night. I was just going through some of my video footage. And uh, what a great, what a great evening that was to raise, uh, some uh, some awareness that there are a lot of children and a lot of families out there that are really in need of Christmas. Absolutely. Uh, it's one of the closest things to my heart. I was so glad that we were able to do those events together. We were just looking at a shot of uh, St. Patrick's Cathedral. I wanted to make uh, sure that we showed that. That was beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm so for, uh, fortunate that uh, to, to share those events with you. 
you were always there. Uh, uh, first call uh, to come and, and, and help um, and do good things. People are rec commenting on the beautiful church, but that is uh, St. John's uh, Cathedral, one of the most famous um, churches. Um, yeah, I actually, um, we visited that. I did an event, um, it was called the American Ride, and it was for all of the people who worked at Ground Zero right after 9-11. And we did a uh, concert on Yasser's farm. Where it wasn't where they did Woodstock, it was the actual farm. And um, what the bikers did, they went from Ground Zero and went out to Yasser's farm and we raised $150,000 for wow. the uh, people that uh, had worked at Ground Zero who were suffering from the aftermath of uh, probably asbestos. Uh, God knows what was uh, in the pile of rubbish there. But uh, we, we went by and, uh, and to Ground Zero and we actually went by that church. Many great movies have been filmed in that church. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, New York. New York is a, is a great place to visit. I'm glad I'm here in Vegas. <laughs> I'm with you, especially seeing how cold it is, but I'm enjoying seeing it. It's my, my hometown. Uh, I enjoy yeah. watching it here and, and, and getting to show it to people who are watching because we got people watching. From all Well, you know, I was in my, I'm in my bathrobe and I've got a hat on with the... Uh, matching uh band with my uh <laughs> leopard here but i had remembered that we were going to talk and i was already i just had uh woke up from a nap <laughs> you're you're paul you're even stylish when you wake up from a nap uh, yeah, i've got some work to do in the studio i've been kind of avoiding it we've got a few songs to finish and uh so i've kind of uh woke up and i had a little something to eat and uh, Carmen, my wife, reminded me. She goes, aren't you doing something with Jason? I says, yeah. <laughs> I think it's at 7.10, and it was like 5 to 7. And uh, then I looked at my uh, text message, and you said 7.15. So I was, I was prompt and early. Where, uh, exactly. Now, Paul, <laughs> we've got somebody outside who you know from your past. People are asking about hearing aid, so we can talk about it a little bit more. Hold on. Oh, there's the doorbell. So here we go. <laughs> this is a surprise to you, Paul. Here is Eddie Ojeda. Hey, hey Eddie. How are you, man? Good, good. How you doing? I'm doing good. How's how is everything good with your family and everything? Yeah, everybody's good, you know. That Under guy, the circumstances. Now. <laughs> yeah. Well now now this is uh, this is coming back again. So oh was, man, I it's never gonna go away. <laughs> This is Dirty Hair Day. <laughs> Me too, <laughs> my brother. Me too. We all have our hats on. We're all wearing lids. Uh, at least we still, hair, man. Yeah, at least we still got our hair. <laughs> the people are, are we're talking about here and Ed. You've got two people who performed on here and Ed right here on on the show at the same time. Hey, Paul sang the shit out of that man. Oh, Eddie, thank you, man. Thank you so you, much. You, were you know, um, fingers on that man. I, I got to tell you. You're my favorite twisted sister. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. He's mine too. And I've talked to the other guys. Oh, uh, he's the coolest, most humblest guy around. There's one goomba to another. Know. What are you gonna say? Right? Those guys get on my nerves, you know. <laughs> a lot of paisans, a lot of paisans in the room right now. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I'll tell you, I'll tell, I'll say hi to Carmine to you for you, you know. Yeah, man, we got that Latin. Blood, he he always runs into you. He always tells me, "Hey, I ran into Eddie." Yo. <laughs> now I want to point out, Eddie, where uh, Miguel is in New York City, and he's showing us Rockefeller Center, and that's what is right there. We're looking at the oh, Christmas cool. tree. Well, so I'm for those Nashville, of us, so I'm, you know, yeah, for those of us, because uh, Eddie, Eddie, <laughs> yeah, Eddie, you're in Nashville now. You got Nashville. out of New York. Yeah, man. Yep. Yeah. You're in Vegas, right, Paul? And oh, Vegas. yeah, yeah. Where are you at, Eddie? Nashville. Ah, my ex-wife just moved there. A lot of people are moving there. It's a great Man, place for music. It's you know? insane how many guys, rock, you know, rock guys. It's not just country guys anymore. Oh, you no, know? exactly. Well, now country's more like uh, 
It's just like pop, pop rock, you know? Exactly. It's got very you know, rock. If you want to be a guitar player and be heard, <laughs> they're going to be in the rock and roll. It's going to be in some chicken picking in country. That's you right. Know? You know, there's some great. really great stuff out there, too. Some great artists. Oh, great musicians, man. Like, yeah. You know, the hockey talks down on Broadway. I mean, I, I try to stay away from Broadway because it's just a little too hectic, especially now. But you go to every bar and everybody kicks ass, man. There's like oh, nobody. Unbelievable. Every band is good. It plays great. Oh, great musicians here, man. I, I watched this thing on uh, the writers of Nashville and how that came about. Yeah, it was yeah. always the guys that were standing at the Grand Old Opry as Johnny Cash. And these guys came in from the road. They didn't have, you know, maybe not Cash so much, but some of the other uh, well-known country artists would come off the road. And they really didn't have any time to uh, write material. And some, you know, some of the greatest writers came out of Nashville. Some yeah, of the some greatest of the material. Yeah, yeah. Mac Davis. I mean, you know, I, <laughs> baby, baby, get, get hooked on me wrote some really other great songs yeah, and that yeah. was like the only that's the only yeah. one i remember yeah i love that era remember in the 70s all those oh. songs oh the like, you know one hit wonders i mean yeah. there were some great material that came out of the that 70s. chicago died um, yep brandy yep. Uh, oh yeah uh yeah, yeah. wildfire by uh, michael murphy my love goes where my rosemary all those songs oh, oh like, yeah yeah a <laughs> yeah. thumb goes up a car goes by. <laughs> <laughs> I said, hey, Brandy. Hey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, there's some great stuff, you know. These eyes are crying. Right. Oh, awesome. <laughs> the Guess awesome. Who was just amazing. There's some yeah. great music in the 70s that people don't realize that yeah. was kind of yeah. like the foundation of all of the 80s stuff. Exactly. That it kind of got everybody ready. It was, they were all like... You know, that was kind of big anthem rock at the time. Some of those oh, yeah. yeah. Big time. Big time. You know, mm -hmm. and nobody expected what was going to happen in the 80s. Yeah. It, it yeah. turned out to be producers were the key to the record companies. And it really uh, wasn't yeah. letting the artists just go in and do what they want. I was watching this thing on, on uh, I think it was on, on the story of Atlantic. And yeah, the, the Led Zeppelin wouldn't let... Atlantic in the studio until they were done with the record. <laughs> wow, I never knew that. I didn't hear that. Yeah, oh. they went in there and they would record, and then they would go, "Hey, can we hear what you what you guys are playing? What do you what do you what are what's going to be the hit? You know, you can't yeah. hear nothing. It was well, great. Something they could say, you know, you yeah, know, just kind of like, like the Beatles <laughs> who broke every rule in the book. Like, this yeah, is the like, yeah, they this can, is they the can best Christmas that. party that we could ask for. You know, it's virtual, but it's so great to see us all, uh, you know, get to talk about music and have a good time and also Absolutely. entertain all the people um, who are watching it. Uh, Paul, and not have to wear a mask, too. Jason. Yes, we're, we don't have to wear a Santa hat, though, maybe. But, uh, Paul, thank you so much for joining me. Again, oh. it's a pleasure. It's not the God holiday. bless you both and have a Merry Christmas to everyone. And Eddie... You and to you and your fan, yours and, and your loved ones. God bless you. It's always great to see you. Love Likewise, you, bro. Brother. Love you, Jason. Yeah. And Love God you, bless you, everybody. And have a happy new year. You Thank too. You. Stay safe. You too. Peace. Peace out. Peace out. All right. So I'm glad you're here, Eddie. We yes. it's, it's been a it's been a, a crazy day. I saved you for the end of the show. Let's get oh, Miguel cool. in here because he is a big fan of uh, Ojeda hot sauce too. Miguel, can you hear us? I can hear you. I just I'm looking for um, Jimmy Fallon. I'm in the ABC. Cover your face, They're gonna think you're in the to... Taliban in there. He's in Rockefeller Center. Mm -hmm. yeah, no. As it's long as as long as I don't say like this is for the <laughs> Okay. So we're all New Yorkers here now. Uh, two Bariquas from the Bronx. Uh, right. I'm from the Bronx, but uh, also so three from the Bronx. And uh, uh, Miguel is inside 30 Rock, which is where Saturday Night Live. Uh, right, 30 Rock, yeah, yeah. Yeah, where it comes from. And uh, so me and Eddie, we can't be in New York right now, so we're enjoying you showing us around. And yeah. then we're going to talk We're gonna talk some hot sauce. Yes. Hot sauce, hot stiggity sauce, okay. Go, go. So, so Miguel, you'll, you'll go back and show us some more uh, sites. But 
Miguel, I want to point out, you know, Eddie was on and you and I, Miguel is a world renowned hot sauce expert. He's tried hot sauces in, in several continents. I'm not sure how many they have, but we tried Alice Cooper hot sauce. We tried Bumblefoot hot sauce. We tried uh, uh, all kinds of hot sauce. I can't even remember. And Eddie, I, I got to say, and I mean it in sincerity, we yes. loved your hot sauce. Uh, yes. We both keep ordering and stocking our houses with your hot sauce. The cherry habanero is, is definitely my favorite. Although yeah, in the, yeah. I put the peach on in the in the morning sometimes for breakfast. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like amazing the reactions I'm getting from uh, you know. I mean, not you know, not everybody else's stuff is really good too. But it's like people are just blown away, and I think it's because uh, I tried to do, I did something a little different. You know, I did the, the sweet stuff that. There's not much of that, so it's good. It's different from the regular hot sauce. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It, uh, and a lot of people are also saying they enjoyed it. And I was so happy that we turned it on, it on to people who, who watched the show. And so to, yeah. to further do that, Eddie and I have got a really cool deal ahead where we're going to give away some hot sauce on the show. Definitely. And to get you to taste it. It's like crack. We're going to give you a little taste of the hot sauce. And then you're going to have to go to uh, Eddie's website, Twisted Hot Sauce, and you're going to try this stuff because it's incredible. We'll put links in the descriptions for that, too. And uh, and for for a few people, we're going to do a thing on the show. We give it away, and Eddie's going to – he was nice enough to give us a couple of his guitar picks. And so to, to people who watch the show and support and buy Eddie's Hot Sauce and support, uh, I'll have a couple cases soon, and we're going to do that. And uh, I, I, you know, like I said, I'm not just saying that I like it. Uh, it, it really, it really is a uh, great. Well, I mean, that's that's the best part of it. I mean, it's you know, it's it's sincere, and that's the best. I mean, I, you know, I, I don't want people to say they like it if they don't like it. So, but uh, you know, it's that, we're gonna have a lot of fun with this. Uh, you know, I mean, last time I was on the show, I got a great response, some real positive uh, stuff. People asking me about the boss, and uh, it was it was awesome. So. Looking for, I think we lost Miguel. Somebody might have tackled him. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, they're, they're people are t people are very testy in New York right now. Definitely, man, because that uh, Omidron, Omidron, whatever, it's coming coming back big time. Yeah, he's telling them right now that Paul told me to take the mask off. It's okay, and that they're they're they're, be they're beating him senseless. Uh, yeah. But I, I'm I'm sure I'm sure he'll be back. Uh, this has been a really fun thing to do. Oh, wait, there he is. I think he's back. I think he's Miguel, back. Miguel, what happened to you? Um, I was showing, I turned the camera around to show, like, like the candy canes is over there. And mm -hmm. then uh, the thing went blank, so I must have hit a button or something. But um, <laughs> Look yeah, at those New York hot dog stands, Eddie. Remember those hey. good old-fashioned Sabret yeah, hot dogs? And the pretzels, man. Oh. Dirty water hot dogs, the best. Dirty water dogs. With the, the mm -hmm. onion sauce. You can't find that everywhere. The red onion sauce. I love it, man. I love that. Yeah. Chili dog. Chili dog. That's the best. You know? Miguel, are you working over there? The no, stands? not at all. Not oh. at all. Because you could get the because you could bring you need to bring the Ojeda hot sauce with you. We do carry it everywhere we go now. We were thinking oh. about doing a series where we show you where we go and what we add the Ojeda <laughs> hot sauce. We haven't done the ice yeah, cream yeah. yet. That would be great, like maybe roaming on the streets. Yeah, and no, like every time. Try it, like, a, you know, get those little spoons. Yeah. And, you know, and you give them a little taste, you know. It's like, that would be pretty funny. Mm -hmm. That would actually be hysterical. Like, yeah, you could be a man on the street man on with some hot sauce. Yeah. Yeah, tell him, take off your mask. Don't worry about the virus. Have some hot sauce. You could lie to them. You could say this is for, like, the Tonight Show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They... On the Tonight Show or something. Now, where are you exactly now, Miguel? I am on 50 West 52nd String, uh, 52nd Street. The yeah. cold, the cold got my mom feeling like Sylvester Stallone. I'm going like, yo, Adrian, I don't know <laughs> how fucking cold it is, but I got to get back to my room. Right? Yeah, yeah, beat the meat, you know. Every time yeah, I go down, need, I beat the meat. <laughs> you need some mojeda hot sauce to warm you up. Miguel, I'm going to check back in with you in just a minute. Don't go anywhere, all right? All righty. Stay there, and uh, we'll chat. I'm going to wrap up with Eddie, though, and then we'll, we'll and then Keep we'll chat. Going. All right, Miguel. Right. Okay. It's uh, so funny, man. You have him doing the street thing. He's the man, yeah, he's the man on the street. It's you know, Eddie. Every year we would do these charity events here for Toys for Tots, and this year, uh, you know, 
places are not having these kind of gatherings. And so I thought it'd be fun to have some of my favorite guests on who made some of my favorite records or some of the you know, best stories. And uh, and listen, I've said it on the show before, you've been on uh, twice, is that Twisted Sister is the, the, the hard rock heavy metal band that changed my life. Uh, I've been such a fan of yours. Uh, so it's a pleasure that, uh, to get to talk to you. And uh, our best conversations are off the air. When the show ends, yeah. then we really dish the good stuff. But, you yeah. know, that's for us. But uh, And, yeah. and yeah. I'm so happy to discover uh, um, uh, this hot sauce and, and, and share it with other people. Uh, what, Eddie, what, what, is, what is Christmas like in the Ojeda household? Uh, it's pretty mellow right now. My daughter's actually coming here from L.A., to stay with us for the weekend. Mm -hmm. So um, it's kind of funny because she wanted a dining room set. So I told her, okay, look, I'll buy that for you for Christmas. So then she calls me back like, maybe a couple hours later. She goes, you know, instead of the dining room set, maybe we should buy airplane tickets <laughs> to, <laughs> to uh, Nashville. I said, yeah, definitely come. So now, you know, I'm going to end up paying for both. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> like, the, the, you know, the... Uh, Dining room set and the airplane tickets, but hey, man, you know it's Christmas. Eddie, you don't have to answer this question. I'm just going to read it. Eddie is such a nice guy. How does he put up with D? Uh, you know, uh, you don't have to comment. <laughs> but well, uh, no, D. You know, it's funny. People, he's very intense on stage, but it, it, he's not like that. Mm -hmm. And. It's kind of over the last few years, we've actually gotten a lot closer and been able to talk about a lot of things that kind of happened that was uh, kind of misunderstood. So, yeah. Eddie, a favorite Twisted song? Is that possible? Can you pick one? Oh, well, well I always got to say one of my favorites is The Price because, mm -hmm. you know, I did kind of a Leslie West type solo on there and, uh, you know, it's kind of near and dear to me and actually that's how i met leslie west he saw the video and uh I, you know i went to this to the china club and larry demarzio introduced us and he said hey man i just saw that video of the price and i said i really like the way you played on that i said well you should it's you, <laughs> you know, i definitely cop your whole vibe to you know to do that like i thought like what would leslie do you know eddie I, what's funny you know, is when i was a kid Listen to Twisted Sister. My mother told me, oh, I like this. It sounds like Mountain. And I thought she was crazy. I That's thought my mother was just, she says everything sounds like what she likes. But right, right, right. She was, my mother was right. Well, that's weird. Yeah, because, I, I mean, I tend to, that's the kind of style I play in, like a Leslie Clapton kind of vibe, Hendrix. And, you know, that's my, that's old school. That's my way of playing, so. Yeah. We've got a, a link right there. It's in the chat, twistedhotsauce.com. So we want to make sure that uh, uh, people get that. Uh, I want to, uh, I, I want to, Eddie, I want to have you tell you a quick story, and then we'll talk a little bit of, more about Christmas, and then I'll let you go. Uh, okay. You told me a story. I have a big collection of memorabilia and autographs. You told me a story about obtaining an autograph that this is one of the craziest stories I ever heard in my life. I think you know who I'm talking about. Can you tell me the story? And tell the mm -hmm. audience. The Jimi Hendrix one? Yes. <laughs> okay. Did I tell you that on the phone or on the phone? Yeah, we never told oh, it on the air. Oh, okay. Well, there was this thing called the Soul Together show at Madison Square Garden. And like all the, you know, all the soul bands like Sam and Dave, Aretha Franklin, all these people were, you know, from Atlantic Records were doing that show. So I went to that show and I'm with a friend of mine. And I, Orlando, this guy that lived in my building. And, you know, we're both looking and clapping and getting into the music. And all of a sudden he turns to me and says, look who's next to you. And I just, I said, who? And I went, I said, oh, shit. it was Jimi Hendrix standing right next to me, like clapping, you know? And I think like once he knew that I recognized him, like he thought I didn't recognize him. He was like part of the crowd. And so then I sort of, um, I started stalking him like when he left. I kept following him, you know. And then, like, I found a piece of paper, and I went up to him asking for his autograph. And it was like, um, it just reminded me of that. Uh, I don't know those interviews that um, you know Tommy Boy, that the guy was SNL that passed away. Oh yeah, Chris Farley. 
Chris Farley, when he would do those interviews, he'd like smack himself, go, oh, stupid. You know, like, so I'm trying to talk to Hendricks, getting some kind of conversation going. I'm like, hey, man, like, why did you like smash your guitar during Wild Thing at the Fillmore East? And he goes, like, I mean, it's like something I like to do, you know, it's like something I'm feeling. He had that kind of way of talking. And he finally, I don't know if he was high or something, but he says, uh, hey, kid, like, you're starting to hassle my head. And I went like, oh, I felt so bad. Like Jimi Hendrix just told me I hassled You his hassled head. Jimi Hendrix's head. Yeah. But, you know, I got his autograph. And I was, you know, I was definitely starstruck. I was, you know, I was lucky enough to bump into Jimi Hendrix like that. Uh, you know, something that's, those are things that made me feel like it was like a sign. Like this is some, something's going to happen for me, you know. And the same thing with, I've had, you know, I got his Morrison story. You know, I bumped into Jim Morrison a bunch of times in the village. You know, really, that's insane. Yeah. Oh, it was like, and every time he was always with some super hot girl, and with the leather pants and the whole Morrison look. You know, and he was just—he was really cool. I would just go up and say, "Hey, Jim, how you doing?" He was like, "Hey, kid, how's it going, man?" You know, one of those things. Hey, kid, but. It's good to be a kid at that time because uh, yeah, you know, they, some of the guys that are still around are like a lot older than me these days. <laughs> so, yeah, how how incredible! You know, uh, you don't think about people. You know, I meeting these uh, icons. You know, and so yeah. to have those stories. Yeah, I mean, and when Morrison it happened a few times, you know, uh, or just on like I used to go to Forty Eighth Street a lot. Mm -hmm. That was the music. All the music stores were there, and, and I used to go down there to buy strings or whatever. And there was always somebody on the block, you know, like either one of the guys from the Young Rascals, or Sebastian, uh, John Sebastian. Uh, always somebody, you know. Yeah, it was cool. And I actually met Mitch Mitchell's there one time, and I think I got his autograph. But I somehow I misplaced it. Yeah, I, people don't know who Mitch Mitchell's is. He's Jimi Hendrix's drummer. For, experienced drummer, yeah. Experienced drummer, yeah. A lot of people asking if you had a favorite club in New York. I'm seeing that one a lot that you guys played. That we played? Well, not in the city. There wasn't much of a live rock scene. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, I think the China Club, was on, they had a Monday night thing, and that was the only place that bands would play. But it, you either played in the Garden or the Radio City or Academy of Music, and those were like national acts, like Traffic, but there was no really clubs in, in the city. Was but there a place called the Soap Factory in Jersey? The Soap Factory in Jersey, yeah. That was right over the bridge, like on, um, right over the George Washington Bridge. And we right. played there a lot. We used to pack that place. Uh, that was a great place to play. There were so many clubs, you know, the Fountain Casino. We were, sometimes we got like 5,000 people in there, like on a Thursday night. Yeah, that's. And, yeah, Twisted Sister, you, you got to watch the documentary because you talk about those early years and the humble beginnings. Yeah. I talked to JJ about in his book about all the shows. You couldn't even list them all. There's so many shows before people even really knew the band, you know, yeah. worldwide. Or, we worked a uh, lot. I mean, we were like four or five days a week we were playing, you know, but it, it was good. It was good for your chops. You know, you get yeah, and now, Eddie, I, 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 I can't miss this opportunity. It's Christmas time. The band that sort of invented or at least made popular the heavy metal Christmas is Twisted Sister. I was fortunate you guys played here at the Hilton Hotel the, in the Elvis mm -hmm. room, which already is incredible history. Uh, right. You were nice enough to get me tickets. I was front row every night to see my favorite childhood band that I never thought I would get to see because by the time mm -hmm. I could go to concerts, you guys were off not speaking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the Christmas album is great. It's great fun. And I think it kept the Twisted Sister alive a little longer for us because you, yeah. you, you could break up. It was probably the biggest thing you'd done in ages. Yeah, that was, you know, that album did very well. And a lot of other bands, a lot of other hard rock bands started doing Christmas songs. But I kind of, you know, we kind of just did that and we did it our way. You know, we uh, definitely copped the feel from a lot of well-known songs to get the groove going during the arrangements but you know we were like we did a heavy metal christmas album and people really dug it and still like it and in the videos and uh it was it, it did a lot well than we 
a lot better than we thought it would. You know, oh, and it's going to live forever. Yeah. yeah. And like I said, it seems like after that, a lot of other guys had probably never thought about doing a Christmas album or song started doing at least one song. Covered yeah. Doing a super song. So, you know, I mean, I don't have to go down and mention the list, but you know the people I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Eddie, do you have a favorite Christmas song? A favorite Christmas song. Um, once again, out of on the album, I, one of my favorites is uh, I'll Be Home for Christmas because I did, I really like the guitar solo on, that I did on that. It's kind of like similar to the Price kind of solo. So I got to do that kind of theme solo on that song. The only thing that pissed me off was um, Lita Ford did the intro solo, mm -hmm. and then they just said solo by Lita Ford. So a lot of people think that Lita played the solo. Uh -huh. I take anything away from Lita, but you know, it kind of like, wait a minute, I did the guitar solo, the main solo. She just did the intro solo. So, and then yeah. it. so on the album it says that. So I want to clear that shit up. We're clear. Yeah, we're clearing it up. Uh, Tell people up. That. right right now Eddie I'm, <laughs> Eddie I'm so glad you could join me uh we saved the best for last in so many ways and uh we'll in in the new you and I are talking in the new year we will begin to give away some sauce to the patrons to the people who watch the channel and just turn people on to such a a, a fun thing you know we kind of did it as a novelty like we'll try yeah. these things and then yeah. we really liked it so much that it's become you know I put it on um uh, pasta, you know, I'll have like tortellini with a marinara sauce and I put it on and it adds this new kick. It's yeah, I started the reason I even did it was because I, I like egg whites in the morning and egg whites are kind of bland mm -hmm. uh, instead of because the yolks have too much cholesterol. So I said, I want something to put in my hot so in, in my egg whites, and that's how that came to be. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, so anyway, just a lot of people uh, sharing nice comments and things and everyone hey, hey. wishing you a Merry Christmas. Eddie, we'll be seeing you very soon. Thank you so much for joining me. My pleasure, man. And Merry Christmas to everybody who uh, took time out of their busy Christmas weeks to uh, join in with us. Merry Christmas, I really, Eddie. I really appreciate it. Merry okay. Christmas. Okay. Bye -bye. All right. Now, let's see where Miguel is in New York City. Miguel, where are we? Oh, hold on. Let me turn your mic on. Miguel, where are you now? Um, I have no clue. Uh, no, I'm, I'm in 47 and 5th. I'm trying to go to Times Square so you guys can see uh, Times Square. How crazy uh -huh. uh, and nice Times Square, which is uh, maybe like two or three blocks. This is, I don't know what building is this, but. So, what, what, is that the Empire State Building back? I can't tell. Uh, no, that's like a new building. They, they always have like all these new high rises and then they charge like a million dollars for for apartments or a view of a city that's gonna haven't they seen what was that the name of that movie the day after tomorrow are they buying like condos next to the next to the river next to the sea I said all right Eddie Eddie's enjoy, Eddie's watching and enjoying he's he's, he's laughing <laughs> said you're toward New York yeah. Mm. Maggie's place. Do you know that place? Um, uh, nope. But I do know the song "Maggie's uh, Farm" by uh, Bob Dylan. Hmm. I think Eddie's trying to figure out how to get the hell out of here. Out of here. Let me <laughs> hold on. All right, I got rid of him. <laughs> um. Well, Miguel, I'm glad you're able to do this. You know, the Christmas party is starting to wind down. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm sure, you know. We've been doing this for uh, two hours. We had so many great guests. Tommy Skeel from Tesla kicking things off. Tommy! Oscar. Shout out to Tommy. I should have told him Bad the story ass. about us going to see Tesla and getting lost and taking nine hours. I'll tell him next time. Yeah, but, it, it, was, it was like, you know, Detroit Rock City. This is for the viewers. Detroit Rock City, when that group wanted to go see Kiss, what ours was, we wanted to go see Tesla. And we went to like planes, trains, and automobile, and a lot of crazy, shady characters along the way. And instead of Tesla, what did we get? And then we got late for Tesla, and it was like, okay, now poison is starting, and we're like, boom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was in the heyday of poison, though. That was like Sergeant Pepper for poison, uh, yep. except the Beatles know how to write their own songs. Um, 
But uh, uh, anyway, so we it was so uh, Tommy Skio, then Oz Fox from Striper stopped by, and Jizzy Pearl from Love Hate and Quiet Riot stopped by. Paul Shortino from Rough Cut King Cobra Spinal Tap. He was also in Quiet Riot. Wow, this by. is cool. Johnny Monaco was here, and you know what's crazy is we really went by kind of without any severe problems, you know. And even going to you live in New York City, um, this has been great. And I think the audience is really. Uh, 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 they, Miguel Suave, they call you, Miguel. That's your new net, your rapper, hip net. Shout out to you, Miguel. A lot of people are so glad. Miguel, you rock. Uh, yeah, because I'm an introverted stoner, so it takes a crowbar to take me out of a nice, toasty little room to like. But it's not, it's, it was nice. It was a perfect weather today, so I'm glad I did it. Or else I would have said, like, oh, fuck, I should have, would have, could have. But I, you know, I, Miguel, you and I have been friends for, you know, uh, like uh, 61 years. I got to tell you, there was one time you told me you were coming to Vegas, and I go, he's full of shit. He's not coming to Vegas. I didn't believe you until I actually saw you. You were on the strip on your phone. I I'm close. I can see it. I go, he's making it up. He's sitting in his fucking house. And, and then next thing you know, there you were. In Vegas. Yeah, in, uh, in Vegas. So we're going to take a look. Uh, uh, we're going to take – Miguel's going to show us Times Square, which I think uh, – uh, people will, will really like to see. And uh, what is the weather? What is the temperature? What is the time and temperature in New York? Uh, let's see. The time is 1055, well, 56. Um, and the weather is not that bad. It, it, it It's like on not a... Not that bad, an estimate or... Yeah, it's not that bad at all. It's like, it's like if you go in the refrigerator, you know, like that weather, like the type, not freezer, temperature but like refrigerator like it's cool you know so mm -hmm. it's it's not bad it's like 40 40 degrees so I'm it trying feels to like your temperature on my phone but i'm having a, a a difficulty and this but. is like the diamond district this is where all the diamonds are where all the rappers go to buy the fake diamonds that uh the jeweler sell them it's currently here. 34 degrees in the diamond district 34 degrees wow it, it yeah it feels it feels good the weather's good the last few days was even colder, colder. But yeah. uh, Miguel, I'm gonna go to a solo shot of you. Show us around real quick, please. Here we go, just you. All right. Well, I'm gonna. Okay, I kind of recognize the uh, the old hood. Yeah, this is the Diamond District. Here yeah, we go. <laughs> Which is uh, kind of quiet obviously, right now. You obviously didn't prepare much material. You go back to the dime industry. Miguel, yeah. just smash one of those things. Take off your babushka. Just grab some diamonds, run. Now, what is that building? That is that a ball of some sort? This is this is another um, another diamond. wow diamond place. Wow, look at that. <laughs> diamonds are forever, Miguel. Diamonds are a toy. Time a toy. Yeah, it's kind of quiet right now, but right now you can see up ahead, that's where the lights are, that's where Times Square is. It's, it's, it's very quiet, Miguel. Do you think that, um, are, do you think it's because of the pandemic? Are people scared? No, because a lot of people are taking out like selfies and, or, or, or pictures in front of like um, the Christmas tree and all that and going like, taking off the mask, so. Yeah, but it's, yeah well, they're showing us your tits now, they're taking off the mask is the new move. But uh, I feel like the streets are quiet, but it's also cold and it's 11 o'clock at night. Yeah, I think it's, no, it's because the street here is quiet, but once I have 42nd Street, which is like, that, that's where everybody is taking pictures because the hotels are near there where a lot of the tourists will go. And um, go to Broadway. Hey, go to Broadway. They're going to go to Broadway. And maybe get a place. It's too, it's too bad there's no snow. Uh, that would be nice. There's the police, Miguel. Be careful. Don't uh, jaywalk. Nah, I already smoked my smoky, so it's like... Yeah. I'm you good. know, here in Vegas, Miguel, the smoky smoky is legal. Your dumbass state, uh, my former dumbass state. Is that Mr. Softy? Mr. Softy, yeah. Show us Mr. Softy, Miguel, for people. I think that's a bootleg, Mr. Softy, though. I don't see like the 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 um yeah the song is bootleg because I don't see like the 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 ice cream cone guy the mascot 
Yeah. Can yeah. you ask the guy? Ask the guy where Mr. Softy. Uh, never mind. You got the hey, light. Hey, where's Mr. Softy? Do you think that like that that's a bad term with erectile dysfunction and things like that? You know, nobody wants to be known as Mr. Softy anymore. Hmm. Yeah. Things, things to think, I think you know, so. something, something to chew on. Um, no, they they changing it to Mrs. Softy now because everything has to be, uh, you know, gentrified. Oh, uh, or politically correct, maybe. Uh, 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 it's they use of verbs or things or nouns. It's called them softy. Yeah. They, they them, or, or, or pan whatever. It's like they them softy. Yeah. Uh, that's a whole new. That's a whole new thing. But, uh, yeah, I'm enjoying uh, spending uh, the holidays with you, Miguel, and showing off the old neighborhood. I'm going to make some programming notes while you do that. Coming up on the show is John Bush from Armored Saint and Anthrax. Also coming up, Donnie Dunnigan, the actor who was the voice of Bambi and uh, was the son of Frankenstein with Bella Gosi and Boris Karloff. Uh, Mary Gibbs, the actress who voiced Boo in... Uh, uh, Monsters Inc. She will be on soon, so it's not just rock and roll here. We like to we like to mix it up. If you watch my live with Stephen Piercy last night, I thank you for that. Uh, I will also be giving you a uh, tour diary. Uh oh, I hope Miguel's phone didn't die. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, I'll give you. Oh, let's see if Miguel comes back. I can hear him. Anyway, hey, uh, a tour diary. Who are you? Trip with rat. You're frozen, Miguel, and not from the cold, uh, or not like Idina Menzel. But you're frozen. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? This is like Stephen Piercy with the "Can you hear me?" And then I go, "Yeah, I can hear." You. He goes, "Well, I can't hear you." But how can you? I'm here. I can hear. I can hear you. Okay, Miguel, you might have to log back in. You're frozen. I am. Yeah. It's not uh, that cold, but no, right, I know. I'll do that. Just use the link again. I'll talk until you come back. It's Alrighty. not Johnny Monaco, Ken. Okay, see you in a minute. All right. Bye. Okay, so anyway, I want to thank everybody for watching, and we'll get back to Miguel. But and I also want to tell everybody what Christmas means to me, uh, because we got to hear everybody else talk about Christmas, and uh, uh, and I love Christmas, and you can tell by just how crazy uh, my house is. As you can see, I've got the Build a Bear Clark and Eddie uh, uh, Build a Bear, which was a gift from Michelle, uh, who you'll meet before the end of the show, who is spending Christmas with me, and then you see the beautiful tree. Of course, Clark Griswold peaking, and then, of course, his jersey. And then there's so much Christmas stuff in this house that I really couldn't even get to everything. But uh, you have to have a leg lamp. And this just uh, this is brand new. This is a Funko soda. And uh, this is the Snow Miser. You guys remember the year without Santa Claus? Because I watched uh, that movie on the plane to Iowa. It was funny that... Uh... All right, Miguel, hold on. Just stay where you are. I'm going to get back to you. I'm telling stories, but don't stay there. So hold on. All right. Well, he's going to show us Times Square, and then I'll get back to it. All right, Miguel, show us Times Square. All right. This is this is a scene from Vanilla Sky. A little uh, acting. A little doing a little brief <laughs> Um. It's looking good, Miguel. What what uh, what what else can we? Is that the Empire State Building? No, the Empire State Building is is nowhere to be found around here. This is a Forty Second Street. Oh, okay. They don't. They they they, but they they still have that Empire State Building. They do, but yeah. it's been gentrified. It's Mrs. Empire State Building. Well, no, it would be Mrs. or Mister, as the case may be. You can't pick uh, one over the other. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. God damn it! Even the buildings are not safe. What the Miguel, hell? do they still have uh, adult uh, entertainment in Times Square? They only have two, two or three of them. Giuliani, two of them. Yeah, yeah. It was it was like a, a Martin Scorsese film, Taxi Driver, here in New York. Can you still buy a uh, loose J's? Well, now they have dispensary stores. I was passing by, going like, "Help, want it?" I was like, "Yeah, that." Uh -huh. Remember the cold? I'm going like, "Yo, Adrian, I fucking that dog." I was you use that cold. same cold excuse in the middle of the summer. Look at those nice people taking pictures. Hold on, I got to do a break dance. Life from New York. Yeah, ah. I hope we can get you monetized. You should put a cup on. <laughs> yeah, look at those famous theaters, though. Miguel, show me those theaters right there. I remember those. 
Well, it used to be, remember where, yeah, a lot of them got torn down. Like here, that was a famous theater. Remember here? Yeah. And there was a strip club. Yeah. Yo, yo. He's picking it. He's picking it on the Jason show. Uh oh. Yo, you got a guest star. He was kicking it at the show. You're kicking it old school, as they say. Hell yeah. Yeah. Miguel, do you remember the guy? Uh oh. Hold on. Yo, 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 yo. He's getting jiggy. Now, I figure like people wouldn't get jiggy, but he just fucking brought jiggy back. Holy shit. Right. Live on Jason Green Show. A uh, first, and, and look at the, the, there's a guy driving a petticoat right there. Yeah. That's better than the horses. I don't like when they, he's chasing now. This is New York. There's a guy freestyling chasing a petticoat. It's insane. <laughs> and I got to move back. And then, uh, oh, what is it? Is that the Phantom? Phantom of the Opera. Wow. That's the most crazy thing I've ever seen. And look at that. Underneath there is where Marilyn Monroe's uh, a skirt uh, blew up from the grating. You know, only in New York do you have that. And yeah. also Ghostbusters. Isn't Ghostbusters here too? That's right. The slime is under there. Don't think, don't think. Ghostbusters. But I don't like. I don't like that they uh, they have horses pull carts. That's an asshole thing to do. Uh, they should animals shouldn't be pulling your fucking cart. But uh, uh, that guy over there looks like he's having a great time. And you know, I mean, he it's a rickshaw. I think they call that a Rick, a Rick James Shaw. Okay, I think these these are time travel capsules here. The capsules are these capsules for time traveling? I don't know. Show me, show me what that is. Investigate, please. Let me see. It's a bubble. Is a bubble? Well, get up there. We can't see it. You will be found. Uh oh, that sounds like some kind of Scientology or something. I don't. Know. I think Paul Shortino was uh, trying to give us that message. Oh, it's snow globes. Snow globes. Okay, but is there one that has some snow in it or some Christmas? No snow. Who's that? We got gypped. That's a. Uh, Boys to men. No, that's a. Um, Eric B. Joaquin. That's Jermaine. Houdini. <laughs> that's voice to men. Oh, okay. Oh my god, right. it's voice to men. Voice. How did you get in there? Voice to men. Oh my god. Yeah, I think I. I hope they have air in there. That's terrible. Uh, well, and there's true. Levi. Yeah, and Sephora. Chicks spend a lot of money in Sephora. I gotta go to Sephora. And uh, let's see what else we got. Up oh, there's the Lion King. Oh, what the heck? What? She's taking picture with Emo. Oh my god, it's Emo. Oh my god. You mean Elmo? Should I, should I say Kermit? Oh my god, it's Kermit. Tell Kermit Elmo to pull Kermit. the helmet down. He's, oh my god, Kermit in the seat. What are these characters calling their helmets up? They're better than that. Oh, 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 oh. Get it, Jam. Jam it up. That's right. That's right. Get jiggy. Get jiggy. Get jiggy. Get jiggy. It's your birthday. It's your birthday. Nice. Wow, live entertainment. They, they, but that guy just found a partner. They, they're like Sonny and Cher. Yeah, they. I guess he improvised. He looked some people. He was like, "Hey, let's improvise." Or the Commodores. <laughs> Two of the Commodores. Yeah. <laughs> I think we've lost Commodores. We lost control. <laughs> Go, Shorty. It's your birthday. Oh my God. Oh my God. Black Lives Matter. Let me get on this side. <laughs> <laughs> you better be careful. They they, they might be uh, arresting towards Puerto Ricans in that area. You know. Uh, but they yeah, I, I, I hope everybody is enjoying this. I saw no, a hundred uh, uh, thousand move. watching. What was that guy doing? He he gets himself frozen like that until somebody gives him a dollar. Then he goes like. Meh! And then he'll stay there for like another 20 minutes and somebody gives him another dollar, they go like, <laughs> so he makes Nothing. three dollars a night. Yeah. <laughs> he, especially jiffing the little kids, they go like, here little Timmy, here's five dollars, go, go, go. And the Timmy goes like, here, here. And then the guy just goes, <laughs> and then little Timmy just stays there, freezing. He goes like, okay, little Timmy, come on. He was like, wow, he's going to move. <laughs> they should just put a, a, man, a mannequin. 
And uh, it's someone's like their moped. Hey, hey, I got five dollars on that football game. Hey, <laughs> there's Bubba Gump. I see. Bubba Gump. Oh, yeah, Miguel, Bubba that Gump. building right there. Show me that building. See that this... building with the clock? Go closer. I'm gonna give people a bit of trivia for watching. That building is Oscar Madison's office on The Odd Couple. So if you ever watch the TV show with Jack Klugman and Tony Randall, that is the actual building. You see Jack Klugman walk out and get into a taxi, throws the money in. That is the building. And Troma also used to have an office there uh, in Troma Team Video. Now there's a Taco Bell there and a lid. But that is Oscar Madison's office. There's a place called Jock Strap, I think. The Rock Shop. The Hard Rock Cafe. Hard Rock Cafe. That's yep. a rarity. Yep. It's uh, it's it's not the same as it used to be. It's it's nice. I'm surprised it looks a little quiet out there. Yeah, it does look quiet. Maybe during well, maybe New Year's. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Page is joining us, Miguel, and he says that uh, th that that's cool that he got to see Jack Klugman's office. So, uh, don't get hit by a car, Miguel. Be careful. Da -da 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 -da. New Yorkers are the uh, worst drivers, Damn. especially uh, the transgender ones. Uh, I don't know if you can say. That. Who, who the fuck pays for a sign all the way up there? Like, who the fuck is going to go like this? Look, I have to take down that number. And then go, gloom, you get hit by a car. Yeah. Because you're looking all the way up there. It's for Spider-Man, I think. Spider-Man. Miguel, I got a new... Uh, Michelle brought home a new Funko soda. Have you seen this? This is the Snow Miser. Oh, okay. No, I haven't seen it. We'll do an unboxing of the Snow Miser. This is hers, though. I'm... I'm I'm just showing it. But this is the uh, from the year without Santa. Santa was voiced by Mickey Rooney. If you, I don't know if you knew that. No, I did not know that. Yeah. So there he is. Look how cool that guy looks. Yep. Just in time uh, uh, for Christmas. Miguel, what is your plan for Christmas? What are you going to do? Besides walk around the streets and, 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 and freestyle. Well, I'm planning on rolling them up a joint and getting laid. Nice. I don't know. Is there, a, is there a particular Christmas strain that you like? Do they make like a mistletoe uh, 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 ganja? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Santa's, Santa's uh, dinkleberries. Hmm. It has like, like, like uh, green and, and, and red strains on it. Santa's dingleberry. So I said, like, hey, I'll give it a shot. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. Some people would like to see you go to uh, uh, 56th Street and 10th Avenue, Terminal 5. I think that's a club or uh, I don't know. But uh, there is a heat miser. People asking about the heat miser. There is a heat miser. Uh, we, we just couldn't find that one today. I actually didn't go. Uh, Michelle was buying me. Chris, Miguel, Michelle, would you like to say hello to Miguel and the people? Come over. Miguel, look, we, we have company joining us, special guest, uh, the only person who's not joining virtually. Who's here? Hey, Rachel. Michelle, say hello to the audience. Hello to the audience. Very good. See, Michelle works with jokes. Look at that. Why are you so far <laughs> down on the ground? The people mama, 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 Michelle. Right there. There you go. Michelle, what are we doing for Christmas? Uh, we are watching It's a Wonderful Life on Christmas Eve. She sounds for programmed. The first time. She sounds programmed like a it's robot. It's a robot. Oh, my God. It's not a real girl. Are you sure it's not a robot? Well, I've got that, too. Uh, you, that's didn't for clone, you, you didn't clone Michelle? Wow, Jimmy Page. That's a big deal. Uh, wow. Uh, they think you look like Roxy. Uh, uh, but you're like, she's like, th uh, Roxy could be her great -gra grandma mama. You don't have to put on the red lights. What is this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a nice, that's a nice, uh, oh. I, I, I got disconnected for a second, but thank God you're here. Um, uh, Johnny Dean also would like to wish you a Merry Christmas. Oh, not, not that one. Uh, that one, Merry Christmas. You can just read it. I don't even know. Oh, Merry Christmas, Johnny Dean. So Michelle and I are going to watch Christmas Vacation. She's never actually seen it. It's sacrilege in this house. And we're going to watch that later. 
And then on Christmas Eve morning at 11 a.m., we are going to go see uh, uh, It's a Wonderful Life. What do you think of that, Miguel? Yeah, that, that's one of my favorite um, movies um, I got. That's one of my prize uh, um, things I wrote to Jimmy uh, Stewart. And I got uh, the picture of him that he wrote, you know, or, or a little postcard that he wrote me. So I got that frame. So that's like one of my favorite uh, collectibles that I got. Nice. Well, right, that is definitely a great thing to have. There's a McDonald's right there. Yeah, this is the one that's like uh, almost on 39th Street. Remember that McDonald's is in there forever? Mm -hmm. Is that near the Empire State Building? <laughs> No, well, actually, we're getting there because the Empire State Building is, like, next to um, Macy's, and that's, yeah. like, down here, which is, like, maybe two blocks more. Miracle on 34th Street. That's a good point, Miguel, that people would like to see uh, uh, Macy's. Yep. Yeah, and they, ha and they have, like, good window dressing. <laughs> like, the way they decorate for Christmas, they really go all out. Yeah, Michelle, you should wear the the, the hat. This is oh, actually it's my hat. this is actually yeah. her her Santa hat. I was just wearing it for entertainment purposes. Um, you, I, Miguel's like snake charming out there. Yeah, I, I saw Johnny Depp and he dropped a few scarves, and I said, "Fuck it, I'll keep it." So then I, I took it for myself. Did you work on a movie with Johnny Depp? No, but I, I did audition to play like his cousin. I think it was. It was a film called Arizona. Mm -hmm. And um, but uh, Vincent Gallo wind up getting the part because oh. I guess I, I um, looked at too much like him. I don't know what, but uh, but it was kind of cool. I, I still kind of digged it that I got to audition like, you know, so that's still, you know. This one guy says you should go to McCoy's on Ninth Avenue and have a stiff drink. I thought maybe he. This is a masculine-looking guy, so I don't think it's that kind of joint. You know what I mean? I think it's all right. It's not like the uh, uh, the blue uh, martini or whatever. Martini, shake it, not stir. Where Where are you now, uh, Mom? Um, I, I'm on Thirty Fifth Street. So all, all right, the way where, where those lights are, that's where Macy's is. So you get to see it. Yeah, I used to work at Macy's as an elf. And I try to get you to join, and I try to go back, but they would not hire us because we were tardy. We were 10 minutes late, mm -hmm. and Santa cannot stand lateness. No, and apparently, they, yeah, it's very difficult um, to be at uh, breakfast at Tiffany's. Uh, Michelle, extra hugs for you for an excellent Christmas show. Michelle's been producing all night. Ooh, what do you know? What do you got? I think Miguel is going to uh, break some laws. Let's see. Hold on, Miguel. It's all you. Breaking the law, breaking the law. Okay. Uh, I guess also the New Yorkers would know that up ahead, that's where you see Macy's. Nice. Macy's coming up. They always have that. Oh, Jesus. Careful, Miguel. They always have that scaffolding all over the place. I mean, you know, nothing ever gets fixed. Racket. That's what it is. It's a racket. It's a racket. Look at all that trash. Miguel, show all that trash. People in other states don't know about that. Well, it's not that bad now. You know, like but by morning, here. there'll be 20,000 bags and there'll be more rats than Stephen Pierce's. <laughs> There's a garbage can. There's a manhole. This is very New York. People say that should not be called a manhole anymore. Uh, that's not politically correct. That should be a they them hole. Or covering. A they covering. Uh, yes, true. Pansexual Can, covering. 36. Weed world. Holy shit, look. Weed what the world. Hell? Yeah, look. What are you talking about? Hold on. See? Wow. And, and that's a dispensary? It is. It's shoplifters will be prosecuted. Mm -hmm. How are they going to shoplift? Yeah. Wow. But is weed legal or is that a mat? You have to have a card. 
Um, I think you, you have to have a card, but I've been seeing these pop up like all over New York and it's kind of weird because it's like, well, I guess they probably know something that we don't know that, that they're going to make it legal because else they would not be wasting, you know, pop with all these stores popping up all over the place. But, but for sure, um, people who have MS and all that stuff, they give them the card easy. So they, they, um, you know, those has the cards, but they I'm not sure for regular consumers. I'm not sure. They give but. it to you for a stutter. Yo. Whatever, whatever they'll give it. They're, they're not too tight with it. Ninety nonsense pizza. Wow, do they have those big giant slices? Show I us that they... pizza. Miguel. Come on, go in there. They won't mind. You folks at home are in for a treat here, seeing a real slice of New York pizza. Look at those pies. And it looks like a fine Italian gentleman uh, making it, right? Yep, and ninety nonsense. Nice. That's a very New York thing. Wait, where can you find a pizza from 99 cents uh, these days? Nowhere, really. Unless you're in the 99 cent store for the 99 cents. Uh, I heard oh, I heard that the 99 cent store is now going up to be $1.49. Oh, Let's all that racket. He's, he's going to roll up right here. They didn't pass, they passed the weeds the wrong way. So they were like, oh, I'm supposed to go to the left side. So then now they have a big, it's like, you roll up another fatty, my brothers. It's Christmas time. There it is. Hey. Yeah. yeah, Empire State Building. Miguel's humming John Williams music. They're going to take away our. Uh, <laughs> I know. No. The empire. Well, I guess it's the word empire kind of like stuck oh, that in my head. But you sing it so exact. You sing it so exact. That's an interesting building on this side. It's a colorful building. Yeah. Another one of these. Here, look at the colors on that. Mm, See the colors? Now. Nah, they're all the way down there. All right, let what? me continue. You know, traffic seems a little uh, a little dead. Wait, which yeah. one is that? Is that the one in the nine? Um, yes. Yeah, I used to take that home. One, two, I, and three. Uh, yeah, I would take that to 215th Street. Lucy. Yes, I'm explaining to do. Is that 10 station, uh, Miguel? It is. Yeah. Which I, I, I would love to. I wanted to show you guys... Um, what is it in time no grand central station up there that's like they have like this whole um it looks like a, 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 a observatory you know with the stars mm -hmm. a 30 a plant like a planetarium yeah a planetarium yep mm -hmm. a planet a planet and a terrium in it yeah is that madison square garden miguel uh madison square garden let's see i'm on 7th avenue and 34 so madison square garden is probably yeah that's Penn station right here Penn station. yeah you know madison Jeez. square garden is the world's most famous arena miguel when you do your own show i'll go to the las vegas strip and i'll show you around oh yeah for sure especially with, like losing all my scars um yeah, yeah penn station yeah. only three only three yeah someone is pointing out that uh, <laughs> uh by the way miguel jay is here uh J jay grandmaster since, jay jay since the collector and he would like someone to send a super chat so miguel can get the subway <laughs> so we're hoping that uh uh, and, and then other people are talking about 10 East 23rd Street. That's the original Kiss rehearsal loft location. Oh, but that's 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 the east side. Miguel's yeah, on the west yeah. side. That's a long yeah. walk. Wow, so fucking quiet. Look, this is Madison Square Garden right here. I guess they have a hold whole on, scaffolding let's, here. Hold on. Let's show that, Miguel. Look. You know, Miguel, you and I worked there as well. We were in a show called Madison Square Garden with Chris Angel and Alice Cooper, right? Yes, yes. Madison we didn't get fired artist. from that. We didn't get fired, right? Nah, they were desperate. They needed people like crazy. Yeah. Because it gets tiring. Like you're there eight hours jumping out and like going, boo, boo, boo. After a while, you, that gets tiring. Yeah. You get tired. Well, we were method actors, though. 
Can you believe, Miguel, a thousand people just sit around and watch this? <laughs> really? Holy Smokey Joe. Well, you're, you're, you had a lot of good, you had a lot of good, good uh, um, people on tonight, so. But I like, thought they would all just log out. See, they, oh, Madison Square Garden. See, there's the garden there. He acts like it's the first time he's ever seen it. He worked oh. there. <laughs> Miguel, okay. you hi. What is that there? Is that a Whataburger? What is that called? What is that place? A smash Burger. Yo. Smash Burger, of course. Yeah. Thank you, Smash. Smash that like button. That's a very good point. Thank you. Jay, Jay has been alerting people. Smash it. Smash it. Stuff. Smash it like you own it. Miguel is walking the lonely streets. Uh, here's Jimmy Page. Jimmy Page has been to Madison Square Garden. Song remains the same. And I will say there was not a day that walk uh, that we end, went by when we walk up that ramp with the limo. You ever see song Rangers in? Yeah. So, yeah, and There's we would walk in there. It was really to say. Miguel. Another cool story about when we worked at Madison Square Garden is Wayne Gretzky was playing for the Rangers, and I used to get to go in at uh, when they were practicing. I walk right up to the ice, right on the glass, and watch Wayne Gretzky, you know, greatest hockey player of all time, play. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. One time I I changed from the costume and I pressed the elevator, it went all the way up when it opened. I was in the balcony washing uh, uh, the Peshmo. I said, Holy shit. So I just yes. went, sat, sat down, and I was like, Hey, let me check out the Peshmo. Yeah, I did that too. I saw the Peshmo and I went to Fish. That's a bunch of uh, dirty hippies dancing around, but I went to that too. Yeah. Where are you now, Miguel? Uh, Madison Square Garden on the other side. So you can see the. Oh, good. Let me, let me, uh, the world's most famous arena. I hope people are enjoying this. Miguel's doing this for you. Muhammad Ali, also Bruce Lee came to Madison Square Garden. That's right. That's right. Eddie Ojeda met Jimi Hendrix in Madison Square Garden, he told us. Wow, wow, okay. Yeah, he told a great story about that. Uh, if you guys are just tuning in, make sure after this you go back and you watch the replay because uh, we had some amazing guests. And just a minute, I'm going to wrap up because I've got some holiday... Uh, uh, shoplifting, shopping um, to do. And Michelle is getting sick of this. Uh, 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 we have very, very big plans uh, this evening, right? Very big plans? Huge. Huge. Oh. Huge. Fantastic. Fantastic. Huge. Huge. China. Uh, anyway. One more like to get to 100. Well, that's great. We, we need that. We need 100 wow. likes. Wow. 100, 100. Miguel, someone would like to see some rats. A Chinatown in rat. They want to see rats. You don't have to go to Chinatown to see rats. That's racist. You can see rats everywhere. Uh, you can actually see me on the road with the voice of rat uh, uh, until this uh, uh, omni, omni, omni uh, crone uh, 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 shuts the world down because it's going to. Michelle hopes you make Christmas cookies or edibles. That might be true. We hit it. Steve Carmichael, 100. Thank you so much. Rick, Merry Christmas to you as well. Johnny, thank you so much for, for hanging out with all of us. Uh, I, I'd like to show Bitsy, but I don't know if she's going to go for it. Hold on. You, you, you. Little Bitsy. Hold on, Bitsy. Oh, good girl. Here is Bitsy. There's Bitsy. Yo, Bitsy says hello. Bitsy! She's trying to see where you're at. Bitsy! Bitsy, look at the streets of New York. Bitsy! Glad you're up there. Bitsy, oh my God, Jesus and Mary. There you go, Bitsy. Talk to the people, Bitsy! 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 Bitsy's Bitsy. making her annual holiday appearance. We're all here. Thank you. She wants a bribe. She wants some uh, kibbles and bits. Was that, was that dogs? Uh, kibbles and bits is dogs. Sausages. Sausages, yeah. <laughs> Chunk wagon. She was like, she identifies as a dog now. It's like, oh, I told you to turn the TV off. Now you got the cat. Someone's asking if there's any big interviews coming up. Miguel, I don't know if you know this, but Ario Speedwagon and Styx interviews yeah, coming up. Yeah, uh, that's cool. the string. And uh, rumor is in January, uh, uh, Blackie Lawless uh, from Wasp. We'll see. I don't believe anything until it happens. Uh, uh, I can't pronounce this word. Can you pronounce that word? Yeah. 
Say again? Hearfint. The Hearfint. Oh, okay. Uh, which was second? Anyway, this lovely person is wishing us a Merry Christmas, and thank you so much. And we were glad um, to waste time with you. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap up, Miguel. I'm gonna get out of here. Yeah, because the battery is low, so it's a good timing anyway. Yeah, you better you need that in case but, you got to call the cops. Yeah. All right, yeah, Miguel, well, Merry Lord, Christmas. I'm gonna, gonna call. Go I'm gonna call you later, Miguel. I got a good story. All right, great. Okay, see you later, right. Michelle. Bye, Miguel. Bye, Miguel. Bye, Miguel. Okay. Uh, uh, say it again, Miguel. No, I'm saying like take care, everybody, Jay, uh, viewers, Michelle. Yeah. All right. Perfect. He's he's gonna be screwed when his phone doesn't work. All right, Michelle. I'm gonna wrap this up. Um. We should be in the Outsiders. I don't know. Maybe you look like a young um, Diane Lane. Oh, I'll take that. Merry Christmas. All right. Get out of here, Miguel. You're stealing my, uh, Michelle, you're stealing my spotlight. Why are you, on my you look so good, uh, people forget about me. Anyway, um, uh, oh, Jesus, Miguel. <laughs> uh, I can't, sh he's going, hold on. All right. Um, and uh, thank you so much for that, by the way, Nerve Ensemble. Uh, much appreciated. All the Super Chats are appreciated. Supporting the channel is appreciated. Uh, again, just to get back real quick, what Christmas has meant to me, uh, starting in 2007 with the band Cincy Sinners, I have this idea. Actually, a good friend of mine, not a member of that band, trust me, came up with the idea. You should raise some money for Toys for Tots. Every year we did a charity show, and uh, most years I would have to bring those toys down to the uh, uh, Speedway here in Las Vegas and uh, hand deliver them to the Marines so that less fortunate children would get presents at Christmas. It's become a really important part of my life. I don't talk about it to brag. Uh, uh, it, it, my charitable work here in Las Vegas is well over $1 million for um, the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. I lost a friend to um, uh, Toys for Tots, St. Baldrick's Foundation, who knighted me um, for my research, uh, uh, not my research, excuse me, for their research, to raise money. For, for research for uh, to help children with um, cancer. Uh, Angel Gonzalez, I like to use the, uh, uh, it's uh, probably Angel, but uh, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Um, so anyway, charity has been the thing that's been close to my heart and I feel like it's the holiday um, season and Michelle and I uh, donated to Toys for Tots yesterday and we're probably gonna do that again uh, uh, today. It's a great thing to do. First of all, it helps the economy. People, they, they need it to buy some stuff and let's get it to people um, who need it. And, uh, and, uh, and just to clarify, it's not that I'm bragging. I want people to know that I do this so that they'll get involved. And when I ask somebody to donate to a charity, it's because I believe in it. I've done the research to make sure that the money goes to uh, the people who need it. And so uh, it's been hard to figure out how to do this virtually. It's a different thing. I like putting on a show and having people there from the charity to, 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 you know, um, appropriate. Is that the word? The funds. Is that right? Give shit out. And so anyway, uh, so I, I, but I love Christmas and, and I was very fortunate. My mother, uh, um, really, uh, you know, always try to put on the best Christmas we could have. My father, he was whatever, uh, you know, uh, he, 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 his, he was in his, uh, celebratory. He was kind of like Scrooge sometimes at Christmas, but it, you know, it, it was hot and cold. But uh, but we always had a great time. We watched Christmas music, and so we got together with my family, and uh, uh, and we would really have such a nice time. I remember sitting listening to the music. I produced uh, co-produced two records with Sin City Sinners, a Sinners Christmas one and two, and that's how crazy I am about this Christmas. And you can just see uh, how much of this nutty stuff I have, and I'll show you just a little bit more. To show you earthquake, how crazy the Christmas stuff is here. It's the, uh, look at all that stuff. Uh, and then it comes all the way over here. And then really this is just uh, some of the Christmas hijinks. And uh, you've all seen my Chevy Chase signed uh, jersey. Right, you've seen that. 
and then of course Clark, and of course the tree, and there's all kinds of cool. I love Rudolph and Frosty, and uh, that Tigger ornament tells you how many days there are to Christmas. It's, I think we know though, and, uh, and then of course Michelle was so nice; she got me because I wanted it because I'm that crazy. The Build a Bear. Uh, Christmas vacation, cousin Eddie, and uh, uh, Clark Griswold, and then down here we got the Clark Griswold hot sauce. You never know. Don't tell Eddie Ojeda. And there's a uh, Rudolph and Clarice. Anyway, I, I'm going to tell you why I think Christmas is so important. It's not just the birth of Santa Claus or Christ, whatever you guys believe, and it's okay. It is uh, uh, most of us watching have less Christmases ahead of us than we have behind us. You know, I, I can at least speak for myself that we're only going to have so many, uh, so many Christmases. So enjoy them. Don't be one of those jerks who gets depressed and, oh, poor me and poor this and poor that. And, uh, um, uh, hey, and Nick, by the way, Nick, I didn't see you there. Thank you so much. The OG Kabuki man. Yeah, that was my, uh, my, character when i played at trauma for many years and i hope to see you too your band will come out here hopefully we'll all be able to um uh, uh, anyway so enjoy the holidays let it be corny it's meant to be have fun uh, we're going to go ice skating and do all kinds of fun things because life is short and you should enjoy it enjoy your festivus as well a festivus for the rest of us and uh and yes, depression does get bad at Christmas. I've been alone. I've dealt with some uh, terrible things uh, at Christmas. And you know what? It's hard, but you got to uh, do your best to overcome and try to make the most of it. Uh, don't be the asshole who says that you don't want to hear Mariah Carey. You know what? I'm happy to hear Mariah Carey every fucking day. And not only Mariah Carey, Ariana Grande and her sister uh, Shakira and her sister Christina Aguilera, whatever. As long as they're singing, although I notice. The women who sing Christmas songs, listen to the songs. They're all about how they want dick. They want dick for Christmas. Santa, uh, please let me know if there's going to be any dick this year. That's what, listen to Orin Grande, listen to Britney Spears. It's Santa, where's the dick? And uh, listen, I, I don't know if that's uh, the best thing. Uh, I, I have a feeling you're saying amen to something I said. It was deeper than uh, that. But um, but uh, the Elvis Christmas music is great. Don't forget the Ramones. Merry Christmas. I don't want to fight tonight. Um I am so glad you guys spent this virtual Christmas party with me. There will be more live shows. I got a lot of cool things to announce because the goal is to grow this. And uh, without this audience, this doesn't go anywhere. I'm just sitting in my basement like Johnny Monaco, uh, talking like uh, Robert De Niro in The King of Comedy. Ma, I'm broadcasting, you know. And, I, um, and so anyway, again, uh, 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 from the bottom of my heart, my, my what's left of it, and thank God I found out it's working. Uh, uh, I can take my sweater off at the end like Mr. Rogers. Uh, you know who Mr. Rogers is? Yeah. I don't know if that applied to your generation. Uh, anyway, it's so happy to see all of these nice works. And uh, I'm just showing a couple of them. And, uh, and, uh, and thank you so much um, for joining me. We will be uh, joining more. And thank you so much to the amazing guests because, uh, wow. What a show it's been. Um, thank you very much. Uh, I hope you all have a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, and um, look forward to sharing a lot more uh, memories with you. Thank you very much, and good night.